Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Council of the Multiverse. Whoa. The Council mu must convene. Is that, is that the right word? Or commence? No, that's... Convene? That's convene? Convene, convene must... is a word. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. The, the Council must convene. <laughs> yes, sir. And we're talking Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Oh shit. The movie shit. just came out, the newest edition in the MCU. I'm here with the boys. First up, we got the Dreadlock Demolition Machine, Bojack. Yo, you know what's good. It's your boy, Bojack. And in the other chair on this council that is convening, we got Prince Pretty, Tyler L. Guapo. You're a bitch. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Dog, I took a drink when you did that. I almost spit that shit out. <laughs> and I am the head of the table, the little bitch, Isaiah M. Washington of the Fantastic I Foundation. That was mine. <laughs> it's a multiverse. Oh, your prince pretty. He's the little <laughs> Oh, okay. So I'm the little bitch outside of the pod. He's the little bitch in the pod. Got it. Yeah, I'm a little bitch. Yeah, as a work, but you know, for shoot, oh, you're oh, a little mine's bitch. Shoot. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, a shoot little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're talking Guardians Three, like I said before, but we switch over to the multiverse. I didn't say that yet. We're gonna start off non-spoiler, then we're gonna go full spoiler, and then talk about every major character, their arcs, likes dislikes uh what they ate for breakfast during the movie we're gonna talk about it all i was just gonna say that let's get it <laughs> I was gonna be like, what they ate for breakfast. you damn let's go. right <laughs> all right so if you haven't seen the movie yet we're gonna start off first couple of minutes non-spoilers no spoilers at all actually some spoilers we gotta tell you who's in the movie uh <laughs> but no major spoilers we're not gonna tell you that thanos came back okay no worries. So, Bojack. I love that part. Love <laughs> when <laughs> That's my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> want to, I want to start off with you, Bojack. What did you think overall about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3? Uh, so, overall, I thought it was dope as fuck. Uh, the tone is definitely way, like, uh, way darker and more serious than the other movies. Not to say that there's not comedy in it because it's still a healthy amount of comedy but you know the main the main conflict of the movie and the subject matter of the movie don't really allow as much for uh that it doesn't allow there to be as much comedy in it but i was still able to enjoy it overall i thought it was really dope i think a lot of the characters um i feel like the guardians have the most character development within the mcu other than like Tony Stark, maybe. <laughs> so, like, yeah, as, and it seems as little time as we spent with them, they've had, like, the, the most interesting character arcs. And I feel like everybody got a healthy amount of development and or closure in this movie without, like, saying, like, who and what and all that jazz. So, I overall, I thought it was a big plus. Uh, super dope. Really enjoyed it. Even like the sad parts, I cried a few times. <laughs> um, mm. But uh, nah, it was it was a definite like super good movie experience. I'd probably go see it again. Okay, Tyler, how about you? Uh, I thought the movie fucking sucked. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, I'm kidding. Um, that movie made me cry the entire fucking movie. <laughs> that's that's actually not a bit. I cried like seven or eight times during the movie. I could not stop crying. Um, I th there's not really much more I can add that Bo did not already state, but overall, like the story was just depressing. Yeah, so depressing, and I was I wasn't really prepared for it because you know the in the first one and the second one it's not really as that depressing. Like there's some depressing moments, but it wasn't the overall like theme of the movie but for this one it was very much the theme of the movie and very much intended and it fucked with me the whole time okay okay all right so i echo what you guys are saying um 
just to add on to it. Um, it the first thing that comes to mind, it did feel very long. And you know what? I should probably say that because that's a spoiler. You know what? No, I, 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 no I, I think I think there's a way you can you can get into what you're trying to say without like getting spoilery. Because I I I will say, I think the the <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put a pre pause on what I'm about to say. I think the length was properly used, but it did feel long. Excuse me. I so I pre-paused. <laughs> I pre-paused. I didn't tell you to pause. I was just saying, excuse me. <laughs> I pre-paused. The the length of the movie definitely like was felt for sure. But I feel like it was an effective use. I don't feel like there was any like so I thought Black Panther 2 was long also. But like uh Tyler, I'm hearing myself. Uh oh. So I thought Black Panther 2 was uh was long but like I don't know the links felt different to me in that one compared to this one like I didn't I didn't feel myself like ah fuck this is getting super long like I kind of hit that point in part of Black Panther I don't remember when exactly but somewhere in Black Panther I was like man this is getting a little lengthy and in this one the I was I think I was just hooked in more the entire time so i didn't it didn't mm-hmm. bother me as much but it definitely is a lengthy uh runtime for sure yeah bo bo basically now what i was about to add on to it was that fucking i was so into it that it like i didn't notice until like very late into the movie and i was like i took my phone out because it vibrated so i took my phone out to look at it just to make sure it wasn't an emergency or anything and i looked and i was like See what time it was. I was like, "Holy shit, this movie is long." Did not, didn't even put two and two together until like that point in the movie. Hmm. Okay, I see what you guys are saying. I'll go into a little bit more detail in the spoilers because it's like connected. At least my thoughts on that. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, you guys talked about everything else. The tone is very much appreciated. I liked how it was serious for most of it. Um, you know, you just feel that they care about these characters, which right. makes you feel connected to them. These aren't just, you know, these aren't, it, of course, all these movies are, just exist to make money. But if these movies, the collection of the Guardians movies, they just feel like so much more. Mm-hmm. It's something... Obviously, right now, I can't put it into words. It's There's just something about it. Even if I do think the movie was pretty long, it's still I'm still getting the atmosphere. I'm still getting the experience, the feeling watching it. It's just like something I don't get from other movies, especially other Marvel movies. And that's crazy. Um, I, I was going to I was going to add on real quick because what you said about tone, like. I feel like something that was a fucking unfortunately a big miss was like the latest Thor movie where like they weren't sure where they wanted the tone to be Mm -hmm. where I feel like I feel like this was a perfect like I feel like they perfectly nailed the tone on this one in terms of mixing a serious uh, a serious topic with the comedy. I feel like this is what Thor tried to do and didn't really land Mm -hmm. um, where like they kind of you kind of have to lean on one side and i feel like they tried to split it down the middle and that was a bad idea where guardians knew all right that with the topic this is like the last of like trilogy really we kind of have to lean on the serious side we can still have comedy and still have comedic moments but overall the tone needs to be sort of dark sort of serious but i think ended up benefiting the movie right yeah um, I kind of agree with that because, like, to me, the Thor movie felt very bitty. Like, it was like they really just wanted to get their bits in, but it was like you had so much serious stuff happening at the same time because, like, you had, I, I, like I said, I've, I've talked about this off the pod. I'm very bad with names, so please forgive me. Um, the God Butcher. Fucking, Thor. She had, she had, she got oh. cancer during the fucking movie. Yeah. And fucking, they're just doing bits about how she wants to fuck. And it's like, 
I don't I get it, but it's like I I don't want that when I I'm worried that she's gonna die in this movie. I don't yeah. know. Like I get it, but like in fucking Guardians, it was like you like Bo was saying, it was a perfect blend of it because mm-hmm. you still had like Drax being goofy as fuck, but he had like honestly the biggest character development besides Rocket, obviously. But like it of in the movie, it was Drax, right? Um, in terms of non spoiler, I don't have too many more thoughts. I liked High Evolutionary. I liked. Oh, great fucking Most villain! Of the character. Oh my yeah. god! Oh, absolutely! One of my favorite villains. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I yeah. like. I do like it. Great fucking villain. <laughs> yeah, Adam Warlock was pretty cool. I like. I liked him. Uh, but yeah, that's that's mostly what I got for non-spoiler. Just you know, good experience, and I like it. I appreciate. It. I'm happy it exists. Um, I have one more thought that I want to. I want to get out before we get into the spoilers just and then I'll get into it like way deeper when we go into like the character breakdowns but I think this was a very effective use of like introducing like a handful of a hefty handful of new characters Mm -hmm. or at least like uh, kind of unexplored characters and like like fleshing them out I feel like everyone played their part I don't feel like there was anyone that I was like ah man I wish they got more stuff like, I feel like everyone sort of got their allotted bits that they needed in and their allotted, like, character development and all that jazz. Like, even, like, some side characters. Like I said, we'll get into it later, but, like, fucking... I didn't expect fucking uh, Cosmo to get, like, a like little side story. <laughs> fucking Cosmo and Craglin's, like, little side thing was one of my favorite bits of the movie. And that's, like, probably fucking ten minutes of the entire movie. <laughs> right. If that, Yeah. If even that, yeah. <laughs> I think my last thoughts before we get into the spoilers is like for anyone that is listening to this and debating on going to the movie, I think it's my favorite Guardians movie in the entire franchise. Mm, I agree. Overall. Um, it is definitely I said this to Bo, and it's like I think it's for right now, I cannot rewatch the movie, but it's because of the fucking just the tone of the movie. The overall tone of the movie, I can't rewatch it, but it is a very good watch and the best Guardians movie of the franchise. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. If you have not seen the movie, stop watching now. Stop listening now because we're about to go into spoilers at this very moment. Okay. It's 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 oh, free. Shit. It's free. Let's get into it. We got the balls out now. <laughs> All right, Bojack. Overall thoughts, spoiler filled. Spoiler fucking filled. God damn. You better tell me the entire fucking f- plot of this movie right now. This was a fucking sad ass movie, dude. Yeah. So like obviously they did a really good job in the trailers of like sort of letting you know like what was going down. But like they I think they hid it well enough for you to not know. I had no idea that fucking Rocket was gonna be dead for like half the movie. Now obviously he wasn't dead, he was dying, but still. Uh I I was like, Doug, what? And Rocket's one of my favorite characters. It's like the fact that he is fucking I think that that made me feel the plot even more. The fact that this dude was fucking incapacitated for half the movie. I was like, ah, this sucks <laughs> um and then you also are dealing with um it doesn't even like start off with fucking just like like obviously rocket's going through some shit but i feel like the whole team is just kind of like dealing with their own issues at the start of the movie it's mostly t- tied back to peter and how he's like fucking mega depressed about gamora still but like everyone's kind of feeling that from him because I feel like he's always been kind of like, like a beacon of hope within the team. Mm-hmm. And so like for your, your beacon of hope to be fucking sad and depressed and drunk and passed out all the time, it's going to bring the mood down for sure. And he's the fucking leader because I guess you got to get official confirmation on that when he like passed it off to rocket. He is the fucking leader of the team. So it's kind of hard for spirits to be up when, you know, shit is the way it is. Um, but 
no, I thought I thought that was a definitely a, a cool way to like start the movie off, and I feel like it kind of happens in like acts, which I think is another way that they uh, properly utilized how long the movie is. Is everything feels like it kind of happens in acts versus like just a long happening of fucking things. Like you could very like clearly and concisely break down. Okay, this part, this part, this part, this part of like the movie. Um, but now, nah, yeah. Um, Ty, what did you, um, what did you think for the most part? Like, get, regarding spoilers. Regarding spoilers, I mean, like the story, the main part that fucked me up was the story of Rocket. Like seeing his origin, the fucking, um, you had fucking Lila. You had, what was it? Oh, I know their names. Teeths and floors. Thank you. Like them. All of it is like I I saw the writing on the wall and I think that's what made me start crying from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And then fucking because like uh if, like personally, like I am a very much an animal guy. Like I love animals, fucking love taking care of them, everything. So fucking I can't watch a movie if an animal gets harmed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, this movie so, fucked you up. Oh, (laughs) my goodness. (laughs) I was fucked. (laughs) Because, like, it's different if, like, you know, Rocky is, like, slightly different because I'm used to it by now. Mm -hmm. But it's like, oh, man, fucking the rest of it (laughs) tore me up. And, but, like, I think the other interesting part of it, like, spoiler-wise, is, like, you got to see, like, a lot of development in characters and seeing sides of characters that you didn't usually get to see, like, in the previous two movies. hmm So, like, Mantis being real, like, I guess angry kind of being the phrase. Because she's usually, like, the peacekeeper, but, like, seeing her, like, lose her cool a few times. No, I agree with that for sure. Because I think, I think, like, the furthest I'd say she went, like, to that lane in previous, mm-hmm. and, like, in two and even like the christmas special uh i'd say the furthest she got towards like first like anger is like frustrated we've seen Mm -hmm. her frustrated before but i don't think we've ever seen her like pissed off this is the first time we've ever seen her fucking pissed off like how she was right and then you got to see like because like they've kind of hinted that drax like has the soft side Mm -hmm. but fucking like um, him basically being the savior of the movie was insane because mm-hmm. you know with the children and the on the ship and everything and like the reason they were able to like get them saved was because of Drax and like Drax knowing their language which I still don't quite understand but <laughs> that that came out of nowhere that he just know he just knew that language that was made up or cuz was he from one of their planets this is me I genuinely asking this is this is what i've heard mm-hmm. but i want to preface it that i don't i don't like it people have said that it's possible that his daughter spoke that language cuz she was like a different species than him so that's why mm-hmm. he knew it but that's okay. entirely just like speculation the movie never gives any indication on that part right it's just kind of out of the blue that he just yeah. knows it yeah although to be fair i do like kind of how they like sort of just yada yada explain it away because like they could have just been like i didn't know you could speak their language and he was just like i didn't know either they could have like had like a comedic thing around it but they kind of had like a cathartic thing around it where uh um because they've been talking about like like it's like you said, like fucking Drax got way more character development than I thought he was going to. I kind of thought his character was like done being developed for the most part, and then you know, like they're calling him fucking stupid and all this other stuff. And it's very obviously like getting to him at least a little bit. Like he's not like a super emotional guy, but the fact that they're all just calmly and casually right in front of him talking about how fucking dumb he is obviously bothered him a little bit. And then he was like, they're like, you knew their language this entire time? He's like, well, you didn't ask me. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, that that line hit me. I was like, that, right. that, that, that I feel like that was a, I, I don't know if it's like me just being such a fucking mark for how good the line was that I was fine with that being the explanation. But, like, I feel like that line alone made me stop thinking, why does he know their language? As soon as he said that, how it was, I was like, 
damn, he's right. No one did ever fucking ask him about mm -hmm. any of that shit. So the fact yeah, that they he just does assume, know, like, yeah, I was like, yeah, just assume that he's fucking idiot and didn't know, <laughs> right? Because they're like, well, if we don't know it, he definitely don't know it, right? So. And but. uh kind of tipping on with like characters showing emotions that they don't use so which they've started to kind of show it in her, but I was gonna say Nebula as well. Mm -hmm. Because Nebula was they kind of showed it a little bit like during the beginning of um Endgame where her mm -hmm. and Tony. But in this one, she really showed like her soft side in this as well. Like, you know, because she had the it started kind of like she was getting flustered at times because of like you they're starting to tease this relationship with Peter mm -hmm. <laughs> because of fucking, you know, Gamora putting that in, putting that out there. And it's like, oh, well, she got flustered, which, you know, you never see Nebula get flustered. Or at least that I can think of, like, actually flustered, flustered. She's usually just angry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so her like her being happy and like you know just kind of smitten really is like different very different and then of course like you were saying with peter at the beginning of the movie like being drunk and being in his feelings and being depressed and kind of kind of being a belligerent drunk was very startling <laughs> very yeah especially because you know he's the fucking he's the lovable goofball so mm -hmm. <laughs> seeing him just be a sad, depressed drunk at the beginning of the movie was super jarring. Yeah, and then being belligerent because of uh, Rocket having his iPod. Because remember, right. he tried to swing on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was about to fight. <laughs> was yeah. About to scrap. All because, all because he took his iPod. But yeah, that's that's basically all I had without getting into too much more details. Cause I know we're going to go through the characters. I also think um, you just like how you mentioned, I'll, I'll, I'll get into her shit later. Actually, I'll get into you. There's something about Nebula that I want to touch back on later. Uh, okay. I'll get into it. When we get into like the Nebula stuff. Okay. Um, uh, my man. Hey, yo, big, big Zay. How did you feel overall about like, you know, spoiler shit, getting into spoiler shit. We got it all out there. How did you feel overall about, you know, what went down all right so it's overall i'm gonna I'm lay out the good i'm gonna lay out the bad yeah go for so it. so again the tone great it's it's just the acting was great everybody mm. acted their part to perfection everybody especially bradley cooper his acting was top notch as rocket it was insane when when uh What's in when Lila got shot and then he just screams, dude, mother, oh, mm. fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's where fuck. that's like number two where I started to tear up. I'm like, fuck, I have never, crazy. I have never flipped from shocked to sad to pissed off so fast between realizing that they got shot, him just fucking screaming. And then high evolutionary mocking him. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then getting excitement so too. Bad. You could right. add excitement to that as well. Cause like him fucking rocket snapping and then fucking clawing his face off immediately <laughs> after. <laughs> the whole range of emotions that was felt in a span of like 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah. Shit was fucking crazy. <laughs> uh, Gamora, you know, um, uh, Zoe Saldana. Ah, She's like, she's playing, it, it's rare where actors can s play the same part, but two different approaches and iterations and right. nail both of them. She I didn't did think great. About that. I saw absolutely none of the past Gamora in this performance. And that's mm -hmm. wild. So that was great. I loved that so much. I do wish... Okay, I guess I'll get into one of the negatives. Um, I feel everything they did with Rocket, pretty much perfection. The entire mm -hmm. arc. Everybody else got their arcs as well, but I feel that for the majority of it, it, it was just like it felt, at least, it felt at least, 
they were just tacked on towards the end of the movie. The final act is where they're like, oh yeah, and that's that's the arc. And it didn't feel like, it didn't even feel like there were breadcrumbs throughout the movie very much. Which is I why, think that, what's up? I, I was going to say, I think, I think that's fair, but also I feel like, I feel like James Gunn has just done such a good job. And like, obviously all the actors too, and like everyone on the team, I feel like they've done such a good job just over the entirety of the trilogy, kind of laying the groundwork for people's arcs. I feel like I'm not saying they definitely shouldn't have like done more to allude to the the ending of their arcs. Cause they totally could have, I totally see what you're saying. And I agree for the most part. Um, but I think you can excuse it a tiny bit because they've done more than I feel like any of the, of the other Marvel franchises of laying the groundwork across the entirety of the, of the, uh, the happenings I'll say, cause like mm. some of them aren't trilogies like fucking Thor there's fucking four movies, but like, and across the entirety of the franchise, like you even get, you started getting shit about rockets past in the fucking first movie. And mm-hmm. shit like that. Like you can trace all the the arcs back to the first movie. And then even though the second movie was really more so about Qu- uh Quill and Mantis, um Rocket got a lot in that movie too. Um, so you know, I feel like I feel like you can kind of give them a pass just because they've done a better job than everyone else in the MCU of laying the groundwork. But I do think, you know, this being the last one. And the runtime already being as long as it was, maybe use some more of it to uh, make the path to their endpoints a little clearer. Exactly. You you took those words. I was about to say those right now. You took them right out of my <laughs> mouth. Yeah, that's that's mainly my my problem with the with the runtime. How long the movie was? Because I was just sitting mm-hmm. there. I'm like during the credits. I'm like, I mean, like, I. Mantis came at the end and it's like cool you could like maybe head candidate for the movies before this where it's like you know like she spent her whole life just listening and obeying orders and then at the end of this movie she like kind of flips out and she's like I spent my entire life you know tell doing what ego told me now I do what the guardians <laughs> told me I want to go out and do it on my own which is like Mantis was the most jarring for sure. Yeah, <laughs> for I'm like sure. this right here. I like Mantis a lot. I'm like this is a good character arc. I would have preferred if you know what felt like the 10,000 minutes I spent watching this movie there was more that was dedicated to fleshing that out. Mm-hmm. And I just felt like most of the arcs are like that. Um, it was like a very quick, just like a like a dime, like a like a coin flip. It was like yeah. the whole movie. She's like, "Oh, we're a family. We need to stick together." Blah 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 blah. And then, like you said, like her reasoning is sound and it does mm-hmm. make sense. But they didn't mention that really at all <laughs> up yeah. until that point. She's like, "Actually, I'm leaving too." <laughs> but yeah, high evolutionary man, man. Oh shit. Fuck. You wanna you wanna go ahead and get into character shit now and start you, off with him? You know what? Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause most <laughs> of my shit is like character based too. Yeah. All right. Do we wanna uh start off? You know what? You know what? Let's get fucking crazy. Let's start off with high evolutionary. Let's do it. Go ahead. Go uh, you 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 seem like you already had the fucking the, the gun loaded. So go ahead and unload, big dog. <laughs> I've sat here for years. I'm thinking, okay, you know what? We just got to wait, you know, maybe a decade, maybe eight years, whatever. And then we'll get the next villain that's like as compelling, as hated as Thanos. No, they did it out of fucking nowhere in this movie. It is insane. This dude had an entire arc. He had motives. He was, he was so intense. You know, half of it, like I said earlier, the performances, I'm forgetting the actor's name right now. I apologize. But the guy who played it, the peacemaker guy, like this dude was fucking at a buffet. He was eating scenery every time I saw this dude. This dude, okay, you know, most movies, I'm I'm, I'm about to start pacing around my bedroom right now. Most (laughs) most actors are like, especially like with these villains where they're like, oh, I'm menacing. Like most of them, 
just kind of like stand there and there's very little movement and they're like, Oh, if I, if I try to be a stone, that means I'm scary. Mm -hmm. What's more scary is this dude in this movie. Every time he gets upset, this dude is about to start break dancing. He's crouching down. He's jumping up and down. He's getting in people's faces being like, what the fuck did you just say to me? It doesn't work. Are you kidding me? This and then on top of that, he fucking just kills animals out of nowhere, has no regard at all for any type of life, especially life that is less than humans. It's, dude, everything about this guy is fucking phenomenal. And I'm I believe glad. The, I, I believe the actor's name is uh, Chukwudi Iwuji. I probably Shut butchered the first it's name. It's Chukwudi Iwuji. Yeah, yeah. Shout yeah. out to him. This dude, and I'm happy that. You know, at the end, his death is kind of vague. So mm. we could bring this dude back. I'm ha- bring him back. Phenomenal. I think stuff. that's why. I think that's why. Uh, that's what I was scared about. Like watching his character. Every really good Marvel villain gets immediately killed off. Yeah. Um, Thanos is the only one that like had sort of a lengthy run of like. Mm-hmm being alive and being able to be the biggest dickhead ever or like you know like loki was a good villain but fucking loki is also like not a villain so like and then loki also died like three times yeah. <laughs> so his his shit is kind of all over the place but like every other like good like killmonger because i mean you talked at length about black panther when it came out and about mm-hmm. how killmonger was one of not even just villains. One of our favorite characters that they have ever done. Yes, and they sir. immediately kill him off in the fucking movie. And it fucking was probably my only, like, major flaw that I had with the entire movie. Was the fact that you have such a compelling villain. Which, like, I understand. And, like, it it made sense. That's not even what I was mad about. Just me as a viewer who wishes that they had more compelling villains like him was really sad that they just killed him off like that. So the fact that they left the window kind of open for a high evolutionary um, definitely uh, has me hopeful for the future. I feel like, so with uh, with him, it was kind of a nice breath of fresh air because every villain we've had before this has been like, ah, oh, damn, is he, is he really the bad guy? Or is it like he? Because he has every every reason he's had has been just like in previous villains in other movies, like uh, Gore the God Butcher, fucking had justified reasons for the what they did. Oh, I see mm-hmm. what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. This guy, this is the first time in a long time, was just a straight up cunt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot to say that. Yes, you're so right. He there was no likable features to him. He was just an asshole. The whole movie. And it was like, and it, did, it wasn't even that he had a good reason. He was just, I fucking don't like any of these motherfuckers. I just want to make new motherfuckers. And I don't even like the new motherfuckers I make. I'm going to kill them too. Yep. So it's literally for the first time in like a long time, because like you, you can kind of say Thanos, but like even then, the Thanos kind of still had like some justified reasons for it while also being an asshole. His main drive was just he just had a really fucked up way to go about trying to fix the problem that he was trying to fix. Right. This is like <laughs> the first time it's like his reason wasn't just nothing was just he's just a piece of shit. No redeeming qualities. Nothing. And it was like and then like he's experimenting on animals like fucking uh Floor had the fucking uh Toy Story 3 or Toy Story fucking legs out of the fucking body. Mm-hmm. Fucking just was a real God. I have never said I've never said this about a character. I hated that motherfucker <laughs> so much. <laughs> fucking like when fucking Rocket actually started clawing his face out. I let an audible yell. I was so fucking happy. <laughs> <laughs> I never oh. wanted to see. I think the only other one I can think of is like Dr- Joffrey from like Game of Thrones. That's it. Mm. That I just genuinely wanted to see pain. <laughs> In a motherfucker's face. I um I definitely agree with you in terms of like um because like even on the on the back, like the I don't I don't know if it, if it was like James Gunn just trying to provide like some meta commentary over the state of the MCU or mm-hmm. what, but like um 
there are two different points where somebody says something to him and it's like super justified and like so when he's talking to peter and he's saying this shit peter's like i am so fucking sick of hearing a, a, a monologue from a fucking crazy dude who's trying to take over the fucking universe because he didn't get enough love from his mother and like and like i was like damn that's a good one. And then he was like, oh, I'm not trying Bars. to take over the universe. I'm just trying to I'm trying to make shit better, blah, 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 blah. Again, he believes in his own bullshit. But then, like, the really, really good one and, like, the one that they – they gave it away in one of the trailers. But after you see everything that happens, it just compounds even harder. He was like um, – he was like, I was just trying to make things better or something like that. He was like, you weren't trying to make things better. You just didn't like them the way that they were. And I was yeah. like, ah, shit. <laughs> He's spitting. <laughs> My man out here is spitting, son. But I just, oh, yeah, just a big fucking piece of shit overall. Yeah. Um, but, like, a great gr- acting was fantastic. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I like how he, he, they really drove home the mad scientist-esque qualities of him. How he was fascinated with, like, Things like culture and stuff. Like when he was talking to Peter, he was like, I visited your planet before. Uh, you guys had, you know, some of the most interesting culture I've ever seen, which is not true. You can tell this movie was made by people that live on Earth because realistically, right. anyone that's been traveling the universe is not going to. I I find it hard to believe that Earth has the most some of the most uh, interesting cultures of dude that's been alive for 5000 years. But uh Either way, though, I, I like that he's like the, like shit like that interests him. And then, uh, like you said about just being a giant piece of shit, Rocket was like uh, him and Rock like little baby Rocket were having some kind of talk, and Rocket's like, I can't, and he's like, can't, and he's like, yeah, that. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, damn, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, dims. And yeah, I think <laughs> I think another like thing about it too was like you know how fucked up an individual is when like. Even his own people don't like him. Oh my god! Yes, Ooh. I was about to bring that up. Yes. Yes. yes Can I yes, touch yes, on this yes. real quick? Go for yeah. it. Go for it. Go for it. All right. It. So, <laughs> what makes this dude so great as a villain? Actually, great as a person. I'd vote him to be president. By the way. So, Thanos. I like how, you know, retroactively thinking about it, I like thinking that he's so experienced doing what he was doing before we saw him in the movies that when he got to the point to be successful, he knew he couldn't show people that he was a piece of shit. He had to hide that. He wrote out the, Oh, I'm just trying to balance out the universe to make everybody happy and everybody live and prosper to the very end. Even though deep down, he's a fucking narcissist and he just wanted to be the one to control that type of shit. High evolutionary doesn't have that experience. So this dude is just popping the fuck off, being a piece of shit. And then, you know, over the course of the movie, you're like, oh, his fucking reasoning is bullshit. Really, because he's he's freaking out over Rocket because he hates that his own creation is smarter than him. And then doesn't even hide it from his own people and they turn on him. And that's the reason he fucking loses genius oh my god and it was like and you, like, you were talking about with thanos too even thanos's crew liked him though yeah mm-hmm. yeah because like that's like the one thing is like he was like yeah he had justified means so it's like they could they could get along with it and roll with it and like you were saying he had experience so he didn't show it off like how he truly felt yeah fucking this guy was just straight up an asshole the whole time Mm-hmm. So like even from the beginning, they like his crew was hesitant with stuff that he was saying. Yeah, because it was like um when he uh he did the experiment on the turtle, I think. Mm-hmm. And they were like, "What do you want done with it? I'll just terminate it." Yeah. And they seemed hesitant about terminating it. Mm-hmm. Blast that bitch. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think another, I think another thing that like just highlighting how big of a piece of shit this guy is. Um, and this isn't ever, like, confirmed, but it's, like, you can kind of, like, just look at, like, different background pieces and, like, come to this conclusion. It seems like 
though just the way he carries himself and the way he talks about his work and like other different pieces of things here and there it doesn't seem like he was really trying to hide the fucked up shit he was doing if anything it seems like he was proud about it and almost advertising the fucked up shit that he was doing because he genuinely thought he was doing a good thing um and in guardians 2 uh when rocket and ah, fuck um yandu there's like a point when rocket and yandu are having like a really touching moment and like rocket's like talking about like he's like i didn't ask to be made and like shit like that and like yandu basically is like he's like as much as you probably hate to hear me say this we are basically the same person he's like i know what them them scientists that made you didn't want you or something like that it's like the fact that he knows about that and like he probably is just around he's been around that long been across the galaxy that far that he just has heard of this evil fucked up shit that this guy was doing mm. um and also like his kill count is probably one of the highest in the MCUs for oh, sure. Oh, absolutely. Because the f- how easily he blew up this fucking planet, by the way, something that we forgot to mention oh, <laughs> until yeah. this point. Um, how easily the fact that this guy just blew up the fucking planet uh, s- seems like that's some shit that he's done before. Yeah. And several times. Because fucking... I think that was another thing that, like, there was a big shocker to me that, like, like, he for real just, just fucking blew the planet up. And was it wasn't like... even like a, it, <laughs> it, it, he didn't even wait. Cause, like, so the reason he said execute the plan was because his pig fucking had his hands on Rocket. Rocket wasn't back on the ship. <laughs> Nothing. His right. pig wasn't even on the chip. He's just like, all right, blow up the planet. He said, bet we got it here. <laughs> God, what a fucking guy. What a fucking what a guy. guy. <laughs> He's built different. Man. He's built way different. He built himself different. Also, uh, last this is probably the last thing, because I got all my serious points out the way. I like that they gave a reason for why he has that weird fucking peeled back skin fucking look on his face yeah, <laughs> rocket because because that shit that shit seeing that in the trailers i was like now why why is his face like that <laughs> <laughs> but i i like that they gave a real reason for why his face is so fucked up looking and i hope that um i genuinely hope that he's out there somewhere lurking around doing some more fucked up shit just for the sake of having compelling villains. I hope that he's somewhere out there still being a giant dickhead. Yeah. I think I think my last point to him is I feel like it's very interesting in the contrast of him being like he is to Rocket what Peter's dad was to him. And like kind of like in a weird way cuz like you know he that was also what he was doing was trying to make his own universe and shit like that. And now fucking he was the same way, but just very much not as successful, obviously, because he was a real piece of shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yo, Tyler, what do you think of Star Lord? Uh, I, I, I'm I was very happy at the end of the movie for him, but the beginning of the movie I was very sad for him because, <laughs> like we talked about earlier, just him being drunk as fuck at the beginning of this movie and like. Having because like he's having to go through this. He just lost the love of his life. And really, he just lost the love of his life twice. Mm. Because he she died. He was like, well, fuck, I've lost her forever. And now she's back. But now she doesn't even remember him. Or any of the memories with it. So now it's like he has to he already had a hard enough time just trying to get with her the first time. And how much effort he put in it the first time. So now really he's having the loss again because he's like, well, fuck, I have to go through all that effort again. But now this is a completely different Gamora than the first Gamora I knew. Because like you were saying earlier when you were talking about Zoe and how she acted, it was like two completely different characters. Fucking this one was more. 
all intents and purposes was more of a bitch than the first one. Yeah, she was mm-hmm. ruthless. Ruthless. There you go. That's the right phrase. Fucking was because she's a pirate. Fucking she became a pirate in this one instead of fucking just being I just underneath Thanos the whole time. Because, like, granted, they were destroying planets, but she didn't want to be doing it. And plus, she's she's uh, she's still super fresh to, like, the Thanos serving compared to the other one. But the other one, she had been with them for so long, you know what I'm saying, that, like, you mm-hmm. know, the, um, the there were, I guess there was more, like, wear and tear on right. her. Right. She had her on her ruthlessness that she mm-hmm. developed from Thanos. She she hadn't reached the point of wanting to be out from underneath Thanos like the first Gamora had. Mm-hmm. I would disagree. I don't think those timelines really add up. At least I don't think. Because did well, they pluck the first... her from the first Guardians movie? So she I was would talking be about in the same place. No, I'm talking about this second Gamora because second Gamora is really fucking was. If you remember in Endgame, she was very much with Thanos and was wanting Thanos to kind of succeed. I think I think the shit oh, kind of changing. I think I was like I think I think the the switch in like the timeline made her like made her not. She didn't get that last bit of development that she got right before mm. she got arrested. Gotcha, mm-hmm. gotcha. I see what you're that saying. part. Okay. So now this is kind of what the stage is if she kind of maintained just being with Thanos, but now Thanos is gone. So she doesn't have that like life that she had beforehand. So now she had to find her own life. And of course it just inevitably led to her being a pirate. Hmm. We are the pirates who don't do anything. <laughs> Stay home and lie around. Um, no, I think that's a good point though. Um, but fucking <laughs> I I like that um I like that we I think it was uh what am I trying to say? I think Star Lord's fucking arc has been so overall it's been pretty sad but also like I guess gratifying to see a dude that had been uh, see a dude that's been running from himself and his past for so long finally having to reach that point where he's like, I got to stop running. We're like, I like, I like the fucking, the parallels between him and Rocket's story. I like, a lot of people say that like Rocket has been the, the, the real protagonist of the entire arc. And like Peter's been the guy that's like the framed protagonist. Mm, yeah. But also like, I think that's done on purpose and they share a lot of similarities. Rocket literally says at the end of the movie, I'm done running. And that's kind of Peter's whole end story arc is I'm done running and he's done running away from his own fucking problems. And he's done running away from like having to go back home and deal with his family and shit. Um, I mean, I like that. Like they don't completely like go away from the character. Art. He's a big fucking goofball. He still has a lot of funny, goofy moments in the movie, but uh, it, by and large, he's a big depressed fuck. Which you know, super relatable, but uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> by and large, that is his character is just being a big depressed fuck and like, because like it's it's super realistic. Like when you don't just because you're depressed doesn't mean you are literally sad and fucking depressed twenty four seven. Like it's there a lot and it does influence a lot of how you think and handle most situation. But I also think. You know, he's he's even grown since fucking Endgame where he was like, he was like, I lost my temper and almost destroyed the fucking universe. And like, it's true. I like that they acknowledge that. Like, because mm-hmm. I'll even admit it. I was fucking pissed about that shit happening. Mm-hmm. I was super fucking pissed. They almost had the glove off of this fucker. And because you got mad and fucking whacked him in the face and threw everybody's uh, everybody's focus off, he fucking was able to wiggle back control and keep the gauntlet on. Where if you just like kept your cool, then like that shit would have been handled way sooner. <laughs> but I like that you know they they addressed that he um, you know addressed a lot of the shit that he had not been dealing with. And I I I think I'll get into it more later when we talk about Gamora. But I like him and Gamora's in the way that I like the way that him and Gamora's story ended. I feel like it was a necessary uh, beat. 
for his character. I agree. I don't have too much more to say about Star Lord than what you guys already did. Overall, I liked it. I like how it ended. I'm like, oh, he's going back home. That's crazy. Um, yeah, I. Not many more thoughts. It was just like it started off sad. I'm like, damn, I feel bad for this dude. This dude just cannot catch a break. And then, you know, this is part of the thing. Like at the end, he got that character arc closure. But mm-hmm. like in the middle, he was just he was just like there. He's like, hey, I'm Star Lord. I'm funny sometimes. I think that was the point when you realize that like this story is not about him. At least in this movie, the yeah, not he about was him. just there. He's just he's just a supporting guy. But I also think it like highlights like how much the team and the family like means to him. Mm-hmm. Um, the scene where he was, I think the, one of the one of the points where like I like cried or almost cried was when he was trying to revive Rocket. Like after they had gotten the code, and mm-hmm. so for the for the bypass lock thingy, um, so they had gotten that off, and like Rocket had flatlined, and mm-hmm. then he was like, he was like, no, I'm no, not like letting him trying. go. I was like, ah, oh, dude, that just sitting there watching, it, and I think they like they just cut the music out during that part too. I was like, fuck, dude, you can't do that to me, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Who are we talking about next? Let's talk about uh the boy Drax. Yeah, boy Drax. Oh fuck. What you think about Drax? Shout out to first of all, shout out to Dave Batista. Shout out uh, to the boy. Shout out Dave Batista. What, what a fucking career this guy has had so far, acting wise. Um, he hasn't done a lot, but I feel like everything that he's been in has been pretty good. At least like just his his acting alone. Yeah. Everything that he's done has been pretty baller so far. Um, I definitely think that he's had like a, a a quieter development over these movies compared to like some of the more front runners. Like you know, uh, like Rocket's story was always kind of pretty obvious where it was going. Peter's story was obviously pretty was pretty obvious where it was going. Gamora's story was a little more obvious where he's kind of just always been like the comic relief guy. And like, he still was the comic relief guy, but this is the most fleshed out character development that he's ever gotten. He, the most he's gotten throughout the movies has been like a line. Like you get like his main backstory in the first one. And I feel like that's kind of it. And in the second movie, I think it was the second movie talking about like, there are those who, yeah, the second movie when he was talking to people who dance and those of us who don't dance. Like blah 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 and shit like that and like that became surprisingly a really important line for him. Um, and like at the end of the movie when he started dancing with the kids, I was so fucking happy. And like of the people that went, like me and uh, our buddy Morgan were like the only people that I think like remembered the line about dancers and non-dancers mm-hmm. because we fucking popped huge. And all of our friends kind of looked at us like kind of confused. Like they like they laughed because obviously it's like fucking. Big ass, tattooed, scary looking Dave Bautista dancing with these little kids is funny, but like it meant more so than that. Than just oh, look at the big dude dancing. Like it, he's a dancer now, and he up up until this point in his in his life, he didn't believe so. He finally found whatever was stopping him from being happy. I guess. Yeah. Tyler, what you think? I think uh, God, you're really just knocking every point that I have out before I can <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, it's, it's fine. Because, <laughs> um, like, I, like you were saying with the character development, it's like this is the first time where, like, he had a very serious character development. Because in <clears throat> it might have been the second movie, the only key point I remember of his story was that he couldn't wear certain shirts because it rubbed his nipples the wrong way. Like that was it. That was the only development he had with this character in the movie. So fucking in in this one, it was like it felt so nice that he was just actually being able to show his emotions properly. Because like obviously, like the rocket shit fucked him up. And then like even at the end, 
where he was like, I want to go with you. And fucking uh, Mantis said no. And it, like you could tell it like destroyed him when she said no. Because that's, his that's, only that's consistent right. throughout it was Mantis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they were always they were always with each other. And, he, and like I feel like the only person that did understand Drax in like a weird fucked up way was Mantis. And mm-hmm. uh you didn't you didn't see it, but the the Guardians holiday special is just them two for most of the runtime. Yeah. Literally that them, makes sense. them them being concerned because so the Guardians holiday special, just like real quick, it starts out again with fucking Peter being fucking depressed, but also like they're like, Oh, it's almost Christmas time on Earth, and like maybe we can like get him a present and cheer him up and blah 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 blah. And like the people of nowhere have started to adopt some earth customs. Partially because of Peter, but also just in general, they just like Earth customs. Um, so, Drax and Mantis go to Earth to get Kevin Bacon as a Christmas present for Peter because of the stories that Peter has told them about Kevin Bacon. They think he is a great adventurer of some kind, and then they are disgusted when they find out that he's just an actor. <laughs> that is uh, that is crazy. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> Yeah, no. but yeah, so, they, okay. yeah, so they, they, they bring Kevin Bacon back to nowhere and um and then Kevin Bacon and them all like I think I think they all like sing a song and then but like and then that's when Mantis tells Peter that they're siblings and then that's the real present that he wanted all along was family. Happy happy ending, blah 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 blah. Okay. So that makes more sense because I remember them mentioning that in the movie that they were siblings, and I was like, I mean I guess so, but I like I don't remember that so that that was when that was when that was like heavily touched on was yeah. that. okay and but then, like back, back to your main point yeah her and drax spent a lot of time together yes so like getting drax because like the only like other real serious thing he had during the whole series was like you know he mentioned that he had a daughter mm-hmm. and they never really touched base on it again like in the future movies until now and it was like him finally getting that moment where he could just be a dad, like you said earlier. Like he can just be a father to these kids. And it's like just it's actually heartwarming. And the most heartwarming reveal is that Drax can be a father again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So this boy, Dave Batista. I'm gonna to be Dave. I'm gonna be half bitten but half serious. So we start off. The first movie, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 1, I guess we call it. He had an actual arc that he was moving towards. His his wife, his daughter got murdered. He is on a mission for Thanos. And then on that way, he, he found out Ronan was associated, I think. He's like, okay, I'm going to kill Ronan. Failed at that. Ever since then, this dude has been a joke, just like you guys have talked about. And then, you know, um, I've just sat here. Batista is my boy. And I'm sick of this dude getting disrespected and not having, he's just just there. I'm like, this dude is a good actor. And then Drax is an interesting character. He has an interesting background that you can really sink your teeth into. Why are you not doing it? Why is he talking about his nipples on a shirt? (laughs) <laughs> and so I'm like, fuck All this time I'm like, damn Infinity War, he's just kind of like a joke Endgame comes back He's kind of a joke Okay, I guess Thor and Peter Could kill each other with knives Ha ha, that's funny Fuck And then we get to this movie And then it starts off the same way He's kind of a joke He's kind of, He's just kind of there And I don't want to say all is forgiven, but it is a nice apology to me, more importantly. So it's an apology to me specifically sitting in that crowd of people, but also to Batista on behalf of James, even though it's kind of weird because James wrote the second movie and he was a joke starting that. Anyway, it's a little messy, but you know, it's kind of like an apology in this movie. Where he's like, you know what? This dude is kind of a goof, but he's like that. Why? Because he's built and made to be a dad, which is kind of touching. Although, you know, again, it's one of those arcs where it's like, I wish they kind of did more with it. 
mm-hmm. throughout the rest of the movie. But I'll take that. It's kind of cool. I get where where you're coming from. I appreciate the thought that it circles back to his background and where he started. So I like that. So he has an actual arc, which is kind of beautiful, and I like it. I like how, you know, now I'm just sitting there until the next time I see him. He's just sitting there being a dad to all these girls when the only thing he's wanted since his family got fucking murdered is to just be a dad, and he gets to do that now. I love it. And I also am kind of tired that, you know, it seems like it's going to be a thing that everybody just becomes a dad now to finish off their arc. That's a little weird if you think about it. But I digress. Damn, Tyler. Damn, it's crazy, Tyler. Yeah, Everybody Tyler, you're in it, too. What are you talking about? <laughs> my arc. You let me have my own arc. How dare you, Tyler. <laughs> Maybe my arc's just beginning. You don't know. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> but yeah, Drax, I'm... I'm. They, for the most part, they did my boy good during this movie. I liked it a lot. I'm happy he didn't fucking die. Me happy too. He didn't fucking die. <laughs> Went in expecting it because Batista's like, I'm fucking sick of playing this character now. It sucks. I'm like, okay, he, he's going to fucking die in this movie. Okay, he's going to go over and, to D- and- DC. That's cool. And then they fucking give him the two shot. The shot in the front, the shot in the back. I'm like, oh fuck, here it goes. And then they show they showed that part in the trailer of him being carried away with the fucking bullet holes. Yep. I was like, that's how he dies. He got fucking stabbed or some shit. And then now nah, they just bamboozled us. <laughs> um, I feel like we should. Uh, I feel like we should take it to a slightly more lighter tone. And talk about Adam Warlock real quick. Because I don't think there's a lot to say about him, but I think it's a, like, I think he he got a for as a secondary antagonist. I think he played his part. I think we can knock some stuff out about him real quick. All right, get it going, big man. So so Adam Warlock. Uh, so and something that we forgot to touch on earlier uh, about high evolutionary is that he made all of these. Uh, what what are these gold people called? I forgot already. <laughs> I have no clue. I forgot. Ah, shit. We're Man. professional. Hold on. We're going to cut this out while I look. <laughs> we'll cut this out later. The sovereign. The sovereign. sovereign. The sovereign. He, the high evolutionary made the sovereign, which that was a crazy revelation, to be honest. So they don't spend a lot of time on, which I understand because this movie was already long enough. So I understand they kind of just said it and went right past it, but that was still crazy to be revealed that he just made this in this whole fucking species, um, or whole race, if you will. Uh, but um, I I like that you know we got the tease of Adam Warlock at the end of Guardians two, and then you know I kind of was not sure how they were gonna deliver on the character, especially because Guardians two came out like long time ago it's yeah. it's been a while since guardians 2 came out um but i feel like a lot of people honestly fucking forgot about uh about his character about the fucking cocoon um so i was interested to see like you know how, what they were going to do with him and like they do him a little differently than how they do in the comics because like in the comics he's like he's basically like jesus he's basically jesus in the comics um but I like that, you know, like he's strong as fuck, but he's very naive uh, because he literally was just born yesterday. Not like at like, literally yesterday, but like he was just born. And they even mentioned that um, like the main leader lady of the sovereign mentions that uh, fucking high evolutionary popped him out of his uh, cocoon early. So he didn't even have time to fully process how he was supposed to in there. Um, <clears throat> I like that. I, I think he served his purpose as a secondary antagonist because uh, he he started the main conflict. He's the one that fucking uh, put Rocket in the fucking uh, the, the state that he was in of being so fucked up. Yeah. Um, and so then that, you know, started the whole the whole journey of, oh, we got to figure out. I'd fucking get this bypass thing off this dude's heart so we can fucking heal him and he won't fucking die. Um, <clears throat> and I like that his turn over the movie was natural. It felt very natural to me, at least. It didn't feel like one of those things where it just like 
kind of flipped. I wish they did. I think him being so naive and young minded definitely helps how easily he was turned. This was someone that had been like a fully developed, fully formed person who had like a whole like years and years and years with the thoughts and feelings. And I would probably feel differently and be like, man, they didn't have to do much to get him on their side after he tried to kill them, huh? But <laughs> um, the fact that he was underdeveloped mentally like that, uh, just like entirely because he came out of the cocoon early. Um, I think him being able to like, you know, be turned so easily made sense. And I like that he sort of is like a mix of Superman and like he's kind of like got like like vision-esque powers sort of and he could just make like an energy sword. I kind of wish we had like got a blatant statement of like what his powers actually were, but I think they showcased enough of what he can do just like so you get the gist of the idea. So from my point of view, so like um, we talked about this before in the first time we ever did the podcast was that I am very casual when it comes to uh, Marvel. So I only mainly watch the MCU. I know a little bit about the comics, very, very little. So I actually don't know anything about Warlock. And I admittedly forgot about the little cocoon gimmick that you just mentioned from the second movie. It's been so long. It's been so right. long. <laughs> so I was like, this dude comes flying the fuck in, beating the shit out of Rocket. <laughs> very, very, very unprovoked. Stole his fucking lunch money. Yeah. Just whooped his ass. Why? Don't know. Just whooped his ass. What? What's the warlock doing? Don't know. But <laughs> fucking just came in. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot about I forgot about that that bit. Oh my god. <laughs> it's, it's fine. <laughs> so fucking he just beats the shit out of everybody and then like goes goes back to his plan goes back to like his mom, I guess. Yes, he called her mother. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so. okay. And fucking, she's like, oh, he's okay. He is a child. <laughs> Dude is a, like I said, no context going into this movie. This is a grown ass man. <laughs> <laughs> he just beat the shit out of everybody. And this dude is as smooth brained as you can get. <laughs> fucking, we want you to interrogate this guy. Murders the motherfucker. Murked him straight, straight murked him. Like no, left behind only bones. <laughs> What's Adam Warlock doing? Don't know. Don't, Don't know. know. <laughs> Fucking man. And then like, because uh, uh, like I know I know we don't have them on the list, but like the fucking <laughs> the little the little creature dude. Blurt. Yeah. Fucking love that guy. Fucking shout he murdered Blurp. dad. <laughs> Also, shout, shout out Blurp didn't die. Just real quick. Shout out that Dude, Blurp didn't very die. Very happy Blurp didn't die and that he was at the end of the movie. I think Tyler would have walked out of the theater if Blurp, oh, if Blurp died. had died. I, I, I think I did say that. <laughs> I, I'm not even bidding. I think I said that the Jackie was, if Blurp dies, I'm done. <laughs> I can't handle it anymore. <laughs> I said, this is the most innocent creature in the entire movie. If he dies, I'm out. <laughs> fucking. So, shut up, Blurp Living. But fucking, he then adopts Blurp, brings Blurp on his ventures. Why? Don't know. Just brings him with him. Don't know. Don't know. Fucking. Man. I'm very glad that he got accepted at the end of the movie. Because mm -hmm. I don't want this to be the last time we see the character. I very much enjoy the character, even though he is dumb as fuck. But I very much enjoy the character. Um, and I'm the, excited to see where it goes from here. Before we get to um, before we get to Isaiah's thoughts, do you think? Um, do you? And I guess I guess I want you both to chime in on this. I just a, a slight fear for the character. Do you think he's sort of just being introduced as like? 
a replacement of Drax, sort of of like. I, I had a feeling that's what you were about to ask. The the, it, pa- the the power guy who's dumb, who's the comedic relief. I I kind of hope so. Like not, but hopefully not as much of a comedy relief. Mm-hmm. Because I do like the character, but like if he isn't comedy relief, he's just gonna murder everybody. <laughs> I feel like you have to make him the comedy relief because what the what what he's just gonna win every fight. That's that's fair. That is fair. (laughs) Fuck! He murdered a dude just sitting down. I want to say I hope not, but I feel like really that's what they'll do. I have a feeling they're gonna do what they did with uh, Wanda. The Scarlet Witch, mm. where they mm. introduce her as a villain, where it's kind of like, it's not like hardcore villain. And then towards the end of the movie, she turns, she's part of the team. And the next time we see her, the next couple of times, she's like learning the ropes. And then we start to actually get an arc. I hope, I hope that's where they're going with this. I hope next time we see Adam Warlock, I think he's part of the team just to, uh, first of all, like, like you touched on. Uh, so he doesn't win every fight. I hope mm. he, they're like, no, we're a team. We got to work together. So he starts to pull himself back. So he doesn't go all out every time. So he starts learning how to use strategy. Mm-hmm. I think that's what they're going to do. And maybe depending on what they're going to do in the next couple of years with, with, I don't know, this dude Kang is might get arrested. We don't know. Um, <laughs> depending on where they want to go. They could, you know, make him a villain or like an anti-hero that they have to face at some point in the future because he's so powerful. Mm-hmm. I think that might be what they're lending themselves to. I just hope. So you want like the you you're you're thinking like the direct path. <laughs> What's up? You're thinking like the direct Wanda path. Of yeah, start, yeah, like start almost as quite a literal. All my Drax the destroyer yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope um, they go that route instead of just, yeah, he's just a permanent member of the team now. He's a new Drax. He's kind of a dumbass, and he just wins fights and stuff when the plot calls for it. Um, Real quick before you give your full thoughts on him, I, look, I, I, I wanted to get some more details uh, for Tyler and also for those that aren't familiar with the comics. So when he was first developed, his name was him. So Adam Warlock oh, is, is him. him. <laughs> oh shit. Okay. Adam Warlock is legitimately him. Um he was given the name Warlock by the High Evolutionary. Uh he encounters High Evolutionary on counter and he names him him or he names him uh Warlock. And also he has died at least twice. <laughs> okay. So he is him. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So that's what he's. But doing. uh, but now what were your what were your overall thoughts on on uh on on him? If you got any closing thoughts, we haven't touched on already. <laughs> I keep saying this, but this time it's like absolute. I got nothing else to add. You guys said it all. You know, I just I like the guy. He's cool. I like the actor. Thought he did it well. I want to see more of him. You know, I, I, I'm a big fan of Blurp. Shout uh, out, Blurp. I, Shout I out. like how it's kind of savage that this dude just fucking murdered his owner and then took it for himself. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even realize that point until fucking Ty said it earlier. And yeah, I was like, like yeah, I guess I guess he did do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. The only thing I would add is I would disagree with you guys where... I would have liked if, again, you know, my feeling is that, you know, I spent the rest of my life watching this movie. If towards the end, there was some hesitation on him joining the group at first, mm-hmm. and then he has to essentially pour his heart out, if he has one, and like just say what he actually thinks and how he feels mm-hmm. about where he's at and who he is, and because he is him. He's him. And then after that, that's where like, you know what? We understand where you're coming from. We know the spot you're in. Come join us. I would have liked that. I do think that, that would have. 
I think now that you say that, I think that would have been really sick. And I, I, I like how they handled it, but I think I would have liked your way a little more if we did have that moment of yeah. which. I guess we can just assume that they did it off screen. But like, look, as long as the fucking movie art was like, it only would have taken like another like three to five minutes for them to have a moment for him to like you said pour his heart out and question like his purpose at this point because like literally fucking his his, the person he considered his mother and the person that legitimately created him are both presumably dead so like he should be questioning what the fuck he should be doing right now so Mm -hmm. if we could have just had a moment for him to do that and then all of them to be like hey man we literally didn't figure out what the fuck we wanted to do with our lives until like today so you should hang out with us (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah other than um, that, no more thoughts from me. I think I think the next person we should talk about is obviously one of the most integral characters to this fucking movie. Damn right. It's our boy Sylvester. You oh, damn fuck yourself, right. I knew it. <laughs> I was like, he's gonna say Sylvester Stallone, isn't he? This yeah, Tyler, fire. what's your thoughts on Sylvester Stallone, the Ravager? The Ravagers, Sylvester Sloan. I thought I thought it was that Sylvester Sloan. Did not expect uh, to see him again. Uh, I don't, man, I don't know. Man, I I know, I know. You're lost. We could just talk about the incredible acting he did in this movie. You want to talk about the arc? Yo, Tyler, take it away. What's his arc? Go fuck yourself. We could just talk man. about what this dude added to this movie. You know, like is- so much. Dog, he had like six lines in this movie. I know, I know. yeah. Tell me those lines. Development, crazy. Delivery, crazy. Character arc, insane. One of the best in the MCU. I'll be straight up honest with you. I was, you know, I was going on my rant, you know, high evolutionary in drag. I was talking so much. Uh, Right now, I'm just, I have so many thoughts about this guy. I'm kind of lost for words. So you got to take the floor. I, you know. Yeah, dude, I'm speechless. Y'all got it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, why is he in this movie? Why is and then every time? All right, this I just worked myself into a shoe. I'm gonna actually rant about this. Why every time, both in the second movie and this one, it's like it's all like the scene. It's I'm gonna try to explain it. The scenes are all you know those scenes of movies and stuff where they're like, oh yeah, here's just the guy. And then it's like presented very in an epic fashion. So it's like, holy shit, he's here. What? Mm -hmm. Every Mm. time he Sylvester shows up on the screen in these movies is like that. And then just fucking nothing happens. Nothing. The only thing I can remember this dude does. And it's not even in the movie that I just fucking watched. It's, in the second movie where he's going off on Yondu, he's like, you were never one of us. You, you never operated like that. So get the fuck out of here. And like, that's the only thing he did. And then that I is get legit- it. That is legitimately the only thing he did. <laughs> and then I get it. Like this dude, Sylvester Stallone doesn't want to be in these movies. He doesn't know what the fuck this is. And I get it. He doesn't know and what the fucking Yondu is. What the fuck is he doing here? You think he knows what a blurp is? <laughs> you you think this dude knows what a Marvel Studios is? Like, <laughs> why he said, is he here? He said, he said, who the fuck is Kevin Feige? <laughs> <laughs> Fiji? <laughs> Yo, I'm serious. Dude, what the fuck, dude? Like, even with that- Bill, Bill Murray was just an Ant-Man. Like, I get that one. All right, this dude also doesn't know what wait, the fuck he's doing. Wait, What's Bill up? Murray was an Ant-Man? Yeah, Bill Murray got... was... Tyler has not seen Ant-Man. Bill oh. Murray was shooting Ant-Man. All right. All right. That's awesome. <laughs> Tyler, hold up. Let me ask. Do you do you care if I give minor, minor spoilers on the arc of Bill Murray in that movie? <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. I forgot about his arc. <laughs> Talk about his arc. He had an arc? Yo, Tyler, get ready. This dude was oh, down no. in the quantum realm fucking Janet Van Dyne. That makes so much sense. <laughs> Do you know what's funny? It's like we kind of predicted that on the first fucking podcast. Yes. He was 
Python Janet Van Dyne. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh yeah. Shout out Bill Murray. So Playing like, pipe in the quantum realm. So <laughs> me me and Ryan didn't talk about this, but like me and Morgan talked about this. And it's like, so confirmed she was piping Bill Murray. Slightly alluded to that she was also piping Kane. <laughs> yeah. And like yeah. So she was like the hoe of the quantum <laughs> realm. That's the implication that they give. That's all awesome. that's the subtext. Mad respect. <laughs> So, I have more respect for her now knowing that than I did in any other part of any of the other movies. So uh, <laughs> with Bill Murray, like, I understand. All right, spoiler alert, Tyler. They they kill him off in the movie, too. Big surprise. No! But, but, <laughs> but uh, so it's like, okay, he comes in, he does his bit, and then he's out of there. Okay, cool. That's what they usually do with these actors. This dude literally just keeps popping up, and every time he does nothing, I don't get it. They killed Bill Murray? Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> Damn. I was hoping he'd be a regular character. Yeah. I like Bill Murray. Yeah, he he just came in, he cucked uh Hank, and then he's out of here. Yeah. I think he should cuck him again. <laughs> yeah, so I like What's up? I like ants. I like oh. ants. Bill Murray fucked my wife. <laughs> That's Hank's arc as a movie, That's by the way. Fucking arc. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm, I'm, what? what? I'm I like I like Hank and yes, Joe Murray. That's his my arc. wife. That's his arc right there. It's <laughs> I'm dude, only, he's I'm not even joking. joking. That's bit. the arc. I think I'm gonna tweet that later. <laughs> dude, I like ants and Bill Murray fucked my wife. Oh man, I forgot we didn't do an Ant Man one. Man, that would have been a blast. That movie was a trip. Because half of the podcast would have been us doing bits. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, let's uh, let's fucking let's refocus now that we're done talking about Sylvester. Ah, All right. shit. So, uh, do, do, do you point though? I do. I do agree with what you were saying. Like, I thought I just kind of be in two, and then I was like, ah, oh, shit, he's in this one too. Oh, <laughs> uh, who are we talking about next? So, do we want to? Do we want to talk about Rocket next? And then all of the, I don't want to say non-important characters, but the supporting ones that we're, you know, we're probably going to wrap it up in a couple of minutes. Not too much to say. Or do we want to talk I've, about those now and then do Rocket before we I've, close it up? I feel like let's let's touch on Gamora real quick and then get all the other, like, all the side people out of the way. Mm-hmm. Like quotation mark side people. I feel like we should save Rocket. Yes. Okay, we'll do that then. Gamora, Tyler, what do you think about Gamora? I feel like I feel like I shouldn't be the one to start it because literally, I think I kind of gave my whole thought about her in the movie at the beginning when Honestly, we were talking about too. Peter. Bojack. You got this. I was like, I'll, I'll I'll give my <laughs> thoughts on Gamora, um, just because. Um, so obviously, you know, it's like. Ty kind of touched on earlier <laughs> in just in comparison of, you know, Gamora throughout these movies. This is she was kind of a bitch in this movie, but like, you know, rightfully so. She was very ruthless. She, you know, was not had that like softened side that she developed after being with the Guardians for so long. I think the way that her and Peter's story ended was the the correct way it should have ended i think <clears throat> her just like trying to find it within herself to love him or something like that would have been like kind of weird and like not just at all because their relationship did develop like very naturally and it was like something that neither one of them was really like expecting to happen and they are very different people so it just kind of happened but i this is it's like like she's saying the entire fucking movie She's a different Gamora than the one that he fell in love with. And there's this is a different person entirely. Um, and I like that that little closing moment they had at the end where like they kind of like put the seed there, but like they like were like nah, like they're done. Where she was like, mm-hmm. she was she asked him, she was like, Were we fun? And he was like, You wouldn't believe it. you wouldn't believe it, or something like that. Um, and like that was like they their backs were to each other. Because they had already accepted, like, you know, 
the fate that they were facing. They had that last little moment, and then they proceeded onward to what what lies ahead of them. I thought that was a really touching moment, <clears throat> and um, that was basically what I just want to touch on. Yeah, I thought you know, I thought yeah. Shout out to um, I already forgot her actress's name. I'm so sorry. Zoe um, Saldana, and don't you ever absolutely. fucking forget it. No, you're right. You were correct. <laughs> <laughs> fucking the the ability to put so much so much into a character and then to basically be told it's like, hey, so we have to hit the reset on your character and you have to play them entirely differently is some crazy shit that I couldn't even fathom. And she fucking nailed it like it was nothing. Um, so that was very impressive. Um, and I like that her and Nebula are still cool, though. Yeah. <laughs> Something I do want to say about Gamora is I'll add on to what you were talking about. I like how they ended it off and they didn't end up together because mm -hmm. both in a meta way, talking about the movie, talking about what happens and in the movie itself, there's no reason why they should be together. Mm -hmm. She is a different person. It, it would not be Gamora that he's with. It would be Gamora, but not Gamora. So it's not like he's like, oh, you know, for her, it's this new thing. But for me, it's continuing a relationship. Like, no, dude, it's a completely different girl that you're with. So you need to, like, that's kind of, you need that's to kind start of mourning to and moving past Gamora because that's it's done. It's never coming which, back. Which is like kind of interesting because like I talked about it earlier was like the closest thing he has to Nebula. or, or I'm sorry, I kind of ruined it. The closest thing he has Blue to spot. like Gamora is Nebula. Yeah. Because now, like, this Nebula now is about how Gamora was at right before she died. Mm -hmm. Like, with the compassion and being, like, very thoughtful of everyone and, like, wanting to actually help everyone. True. And it's like, damn. And it was like when she fucking, because Gamora even said it in this movie, no, you don't love me, you love her. That sounds like her. Mm-hmm. It was like, and it's like, I'm kind of glad that they also didn't just flat out just have him get with Nebula in this movie either. Because, you know, I would have like, hated that. I think I would have genuinely hated that. <laughs> like, I, I feel like it is going to happen at some point in the future. Like, not anytime soon, but like in the future, I feel like it will probably happen. If it happens but, like in the future and it like naturally develops, I won't be mad at it. But like, if they, right. if, if they got to that point by the end of this movie, I would have. Man. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, at least let it like plant the seeds now so it happens later and it's like it's actually genuine. Um, and like a point that they touched on on um new rock stars, I was watching like their uh Eric Voss's like Easter egg breakdown. Um he a point that he mentions is like when they're first fucking putting Peter to bed, uh in his delirious conked out state he says i love you gamora and it's nebula that's putting him to bed and it's like damn that probably still hits for her because like she's been her whole life gamora has been the preferred one and mm. she finally is accepted by these people for her and like that was probably like a real sting like reminder of like that her entire life fucking gamora has been the one that everyone wanted instead of her But uh, I think I think I'm good on on the Gamora notes. Uh, I feel like we should probably let's uh, we should probably should touch on Nebula actually while we're basically talking about Nebula already. All right. Where's um, on Nebula? I think uh, I think I, Nebula didn't do too much in the movie, um, mm -hmm. but I think she like you know she served her part. I like that she. She kind of like was there to keep the plot going <laughs> for both like in on the record and off the record. I feel like that's kind of what her role was, was to keep the plot going. Yeah. Like for the most part, in context, in kayfabe, on the record, she was like, all right, guys, we got to refocus. We have shit we got to do, blah, 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 blah. We don't have time for games. We don't have time for this dumb bullshit you guys are talking about, blah, blah, blah. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. But also like off the record, out of kayfabe, I feel like that's genuinely just what her character was like mostly used for was hey we need someone to keep the focus and not be down for the shenanigans as much as the other characters hey gamora would be a good uh straight man for that job 
Yeah. Um, but uh, no, nah, I thought she was dope. I like that fucking something that I thought was really dope was when um when they <laughs> when <laughs> when Mantis, Drax, and and uh, Nebula end up on the ship as uh Quill and Rocket get off the ship uh and group uh i like um that first of all just that happening was funny the fact that they just switched um the, the when she hears that like rocket's alive like it's like the one of the only times in the movie where she's like very obviously showing emo- emotions like she basically cries like she gets it together pretty quickly but she basically cries it's like one of the only times we've ever seen her cry like that i think that's dope because it shows like the development that her and rocket uh had over the course of uh the blip or the snap whatever you want to call it because like they i think they were the only two that like didn't get dusted um yeah so like they had so they had to spend a lot of time together over that fucking five years um so obviously they're close now probably closer he probably closest to him than she is to anybody on the team other than like gamora but like we said it's a different gamora now um but nah i thought nebula was dope thought she was cool thought she got her shit in um glad that she's like the leader of uh nowhere now as the person uh that played the hey let's stay focused character the entire time i think she was the right person for the job tyler i think again i was nailing all of it on the head because <laughs> You're and really basically good at this I'm public already speaking talking. thing and keeping on points. Yeah, you just like say <laughs> everything. It almost it feels like it's like you wrote an essay before we started. I think you just yeah, I, I got a bunch of things I got to talk about. I think you talk about it all. Like, also, my fucking I've also started explaining other characters while also explaining other characters. So like I've already talked about Nebula some too. It's like I've damn I've already kind of. There ain't really much else to say about Nebula. Me too, a little bit. So, yeah. Once you stop talking, I'm like, oh, what do I got to say? Not much. <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> no, no. You, it's the opposite. You're incredible. You're carrying us. Um, I want to talk about fucking... Um, hold on. I want to make sure fucking... I'm, her, her name is actually Cosmo. Uh, I think it's it fucking is. the dog. Cosmo with the dog's name is Cosmo. Cosmo the, the space dog. dog, space dog. Let's talk about Cosmo the space dog. Tyler, the best character in the whole movie. There you go. <laughs> Her arc is the best arc in the whole movie. Absolutely. She just wants to be called a good dog. <laughs> like that's literally all she wanted. Like Craglin. You don't really think I'm a bad dog, right? He's like, no, nah, you're a bad dog. And like, obviously he's just fucking with her, but like, she's a dog. She doesn't understand. So of course she's going to take that shit to heart. Cause like, it's not like she was like a person that got put in a dog's body. She's just a dog that knows how to talk. <laughs> I forget so the exact conversation, up. but I love how it was just, it, it's such a fucking dog, dude. Like just talking to other people, and then she just, she just, she's harping on it. It will not leave her mind. And it was when they were a bad playing, dog. You wouldn't call poker. me a bad dog, right? It was when, it was when they were playing poker. It's just like I do all this stuff. I got sent into space by my country to basically to die, and I was able to survive. And I did all these things, and I've helped all these people, and I still get called a bad dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh. and then and then at the end when i thought I, I i just i just fuck with cosmo and then she had like a couple funny lines in the christmas special so i didn't i definitely didn't expect her to be as serious of a character as she mm-hmm. is in this one um because like i said like you know like they they introduce her in like like i think you can see her in the like in the trophy room in the first one And then the second one, like, she's, like, I guess she, like, sort of joins the team. But you don't really, like, hear any conversation from her until, like, the Christmas, excuse excuse me, fuck, the Christmas special. Um, So um, I thought it was cool that she got, as funny as it is and as much as we're, 
I like that she got some character development and actually got like a moment to like show off what she can do. And now she's part of the official lineup. So yeah. it's good for Cosmo. Good dog. And let's so talk about that. Up. What's up? Oh, good. Let's I was going to say, uh... oh. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Hold on, real quick. I'll, I'll, let's just acknowledge the moment where she got that good dog finally. She fucking mm-hmm. pancaked a dude. Yes. Brutal. Literally just just pancaked him. Wild. While we're talking about the poker scene, can we just shout out that Howard the Duck was again in this movie and I'm fucking ecstatic? I'm surprised he didn't say anything. He did. Did he? Yeah, he talked. It was oh. he he had like a like two or three lines. It wasn't a lot, but it was like oh. two or three lines. I'm about to say he had like he had like some like background chatter kind of like while mm. the camera was panning. I messed up. I think he should be in every movie. Every Marvel movie ever? Yes. I think (laughs) he should be the new Stan Lee and be in every movie. You know what? I can get behind that. (laughs) When you pitch it to me like that, I fuck with it. Put him in that Daredevil show. At some point, should be in every single movie. Hell yeah. I fuck. He's one of the watchers now. <laughs> I was yes. Doug is the new watcher. Oh fuck. That's good. All right, Tyler. What do you think about uh what do you think about group? <laughs> I love Groot. Groot uh, first off, there really ain't much to say about Groot because Groot was just Groot the entire fucking movie until the end <laughs> when he spoke human words <laughs> and it fucked me up. Not only human words, but then I was reminded that basically it's just Dominic Toretto. Yes. I love you guys. You know what? also pops me and like this is now something that can be talked about is now does this mean that he has always known how to talk and just fucking keep saying I am Groot just to continue the bit that was my Man. first thought while watching I'm about to say, I'm, but... about to say, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Isaiah say what he needs because if I talk now I'm about to fucking essay y'all out again, and I don't want to do it. Oh, I didn't mean Jesus to shame Christ. you. All right, but I'll go. Uh, yeah, I thought that at first, but I think because right before it is when Gamora acted like she understood what he was saying, I think it was like a meta thing where it's if you're around Groot for long enough, you literally start to understand Groot. And right after that Gamora thing where, if this is true, they establish that, and then we hear him actually talk, I think, it's, I think it's like James Gunn saying, you know, over these movies and stuff, you've been around this guy for so long, you can now understand Groot. There it is. That's, that's, that's what's that's, happening. That's the, that's the exact point I was going to make, and so many people have, like, touched on this point now that, like, at this point, it's just a fact to me. Um, especially because yeah, you you touched on the exact thing that I was gonna the Gamora thing, and I like that they take a moment for her to realize, like she, she take they take a moment for her to realize it herself that, um, because like this whole the whole fucking movie she's like all you say is I am Groot what the fuck are you talking about, and mm-hmm. then on the back end he's like he says whatever he says, and she's like all right I'll be there in a sec and then she like stops and she realizes that she just understood what he said. And then she, then they like talk a little bit more. And she's like, "All right, I'll be there. I'll be, I'll be down. I'll be down." Um, and I like that they. It's like you said, that was like a nice way to like establish that. And then I think that closing shot was just us, us finally understanding Groot because we are now part of the family. Which is dope as fuck. Big meta. Big meta. <laughs> Bojack, you got any other thoughts on Groot? Um, nah, I think, uh, fucking, I thought it was dope to see fucking, like, King Groot 
at the, I saw him kind oh of just my, calling I him hope, the I hope I hope they stick with that design going forward. He looks so that cool. Dude, that dude is a fucking tank. <laughs> um, so I thought that was dope that Groot is just a fucking mega tank now. Groot Groot is a mini Titan. Um, and I I think I I like <laughs> dog <laughs> something that I kind of forgot to touch on is just how fucking violent this movie was Mm -hmm. um just this is one of the most violent um because there was a lot of shit that just happened like Gamora just randomly shot that girl leg and like the reactions were kind of were like um the reactions were like kind of funny ish but like that ass like she just shot someone in the leg <laughs> like yeah. uh, um and then like all like the limb breaking shit fucking adam warlock fucking snaps mantis's arm dude when um, fucking high evolutionary starts fighting rocket and is just throwing him around the fucking room throwing him around the room holy shit i was like yo chill floors and te- when floors teeths and lila all got shot Fucking um, the hallway fight scene is one of my favorite scenes in all of the MCU. But like I tie it, what my tie back to group something that Tenchi was like stuck on, even as we're walking out of the theater, is when Groot fucking stuck his arm in like I think it was an alien. He stuck his arm in somebody and then exploded the fucking tree limbs out and they stuck out of the person. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that is one of the fucking sickest things I have ever seen. Um, and I also like when he just became like wings for Peter when Peter fucking killed that dude, which I also thought was a baller ass scene in the movie. Yeah. Peter fucking Harry Potter Voldemort scene just grabbed the dude and jumped out the window and he's like, We'll figure this out somehow. Um, now nah, shout out to Groot, big homie. Glad part of the family now. You guys can understand you, big dog. <laughs> yeah, do you think moving forward we could understand them now? I think that'd be cool. I don't think they're going to because I don't think they're. Go- I don't think they want to pay that much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> have them actually do something. Yeah, yeah I get you. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it'd be sick, and I, I could see it. But also, like from a practical standpoint, I could see why they wouldn't. Yeah, I was thinking about that. It would get tiring if. They bring him back and we could understand him because you would think they would have to have the newer characters still not understand him. And then if you right. keep going like that, it'd get tiring very quick. Mm-hmm. Almost like how Groot has felt his entire life. <laughs> so uh, just to confirm this, uh, James Gunn did a and a on Twitter like the day or two after the movie released in theaters. And the quote, like they asked, did Groot, was that us understanding Groot? And he did confirm that is us understanding Groot. Hell yeah. Good shit. Who's next on the agenda? Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about, you know what? While we just touched on Cosmo, let's talk about Craglin. Do you have any additional thoughts? Um, I like his little arc. Yeah, it was I like cool. that. I like that, and I like the um. We see at the end of two, we see him with the fin in his head. And we see him practicing, and like obviously the practice is paid off a little bit, but he still can't really fully control the thing, the arrow, the Yaka arrow. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like, like I said earlier, I like his his back and forth little dynamic with Cosmo. Um, but no, for the most part, I just, I, I like that. Like he, he was a background character, but like he was there and he showed up when he needed to. And I like it. Like the confidence grew as like his confidence grew throughout the movie to that the point where at the ending scene, he was like, yeah, I got this. If you guys just want to sit back, like, that's cool that he's just like, yeah, I can handle this now. Yeah. Now that I'm, now that I'm confident in control this fucking arrow, I can just take out this whole army of these little little rabid dog monster things that we're about to face off against. Yeah. Tyler, any thoughts? 
not really because like like Bo basically I, it sounds like a broken record I feel Bo, safe. Bo basically answered it because like he didn't really do a whole lot in the movie he was only in there for like 15 minutes yeah and it was essentially that he tried could not get it to work finally at the end of the movie he got like the arrow to finally work and he got to see Yondu which I was so happy that I got to see Yondu in this movie again just because I really like Yondu mm-hmm and I'm still pissed that he is dead because that is one of my favorite characters in the movies. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, basically it really ain't much more to add. Cool guy. He's Mary Poppins, y'all. He's Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> Do I look cool? <laughs> oh my God, and Groot fucking says this in this movie. Fuck. I didn't make that connection until right now. That's crazy. Oh yeah, do I look cool? Yeah, yeah. damn. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's dope. All right, what do we think about Mantis? Ty, I'm gonna let you get it first. Man, again, it's like I feel like I, yeah, I explained everything yeah. about the character. Yeah. Nope. nope, dig deeper, dig deeper. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm interested to see where she goes. From here, because like I'm, I'm hoping this isn't like the end of us seeing Mantis. Because I would like to see like, even if it is just like a small one-off episode on Disney Plus or some shit, where I get to see like what she is up to on like her adventures in between, like whenever we see her again. Because mm. I don't know, I kind of hope they do that kind of series. Because I want, I there's like characters that don't need a full series. But I would love to see like just something with them outside of being in a movie. Yeah, I think but, that might be. Yeah. I'm I'm blowing my load, blowing my spot for later. But I think mm-hmm. since James Gunn is going over to DC, I think the way this movie ended perfectly allows them to just like, you know, you remember what's that? What's the show in Falcon and Winter Soldier when the um. Man, I'm blanking on their name. When the Dora Milaje, like just like Dormilage, randomly yeah. popped up halfway through the series to do a little bit, I think mm-hmm. they could start doing stuff like that. I think Mantis, you know, it'd be cool if she pops up in like fucking like, I don't fucking know. Like, I think they're still making that Agatha show. She could just pop yeah, up for some reason. Yeah. I hope that's what Yeah, I, I think like little one off, like I, I, I don't even need to be a part of a series. I feel like just a little one-off, you know, mini, like the oh, holiday like special. special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. a little like one-hour thing. Just hey, this is what she's up to. Yeah, her and her monsters just go on like a, an adventure for like forty-five. She does have the monsters. The I forgot. Yeah, we never touched the on three, that. She yeah, did get the monsters. Obelisks. Yeah, the three obelisks. Yeah. Yeah, that scene was dope as fuck too. That she just straight up. They're not gonna hurt us. They're just normal creatures. They they're scared of us. I eat batteries, dog. <laughs> yeah. I eat batteries, yeah. man. But yeah, Mantis pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty 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 cool. I guess right. if I had like any any fucking thoughts on Mantis, it'd be um basically what y'all said. I hope she I hope she bounces back. Um I think she had like the least amount of character development over the because she was only in two and three so obviously she had like not that much time to get the development but i thought she was a good part of the team and i wish they gave her like a little bit more um i w- i definitely wish they fucking set up her leaving way clearer mm-hmm. it was, like, it's obvious to put two and two together and like the point she made was right but you don't see her at all like having conflict like or like anything that would drive her to this point it's just like yeah i guess that's what you said makes sense but like it doesn't seem like that's something you've been thinking about at all until this point when everybody randomly decides to break up yeah there was no scene of like somebody being like mantis do this and then she just like rolls her eyes and like fuck like yeah. there was none of that she spends, she spends the whole movie trying to keep the family together and it's like oh there's your friend you worry about your friends blah 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 but i like that her and peter like you know they they do appreciate i wish we would i i we got some of it, but I wish we would have seen more of Peter together. I feel like they should be closer now that they know that they're siblings. I feel like they kind of didn't change much from two, like how they were at the end of two, or even like in the Christmas special. Um, 
I feel like, you know, like obviously, or like not the Christmas, uh, when you see them in Endgame and when you see them in uh, Thor, like they don't seem that much different from how they were in those movies. I was trying to, right. I was like, we definitely seen them together. I was trying to remember those other fucking movies. Yeah. Um, their relationship doesn't seem like it's really changed that much since then. It has a little bit, but I feel like if I just found out that I thought I had absolutely no family in the entire universe and I've been hanging out with my fucking sister this entire time, I would be elated and like we'd probably be fucking like super close after that. Um so I wish they did a little bit more with that, but I still thought she was dope. I still like uh still like her character. I still I like that she's going off on her own. I think um it makes like I said it makes sense. I just wish we built up to it more. Yeah. All right. What do we think about uh this probably isn't going to go too long. What do we think about Nathan Fillion? Who? The rock guy. I don't know. The, the, Who? Are, are there suits rocks or something? The yellow guy. The guy who has dumb friends, dumb team members. We have one of those too. <laughs> that guy. I like that. Um, I like, I like that uh, this has nothing to do with Nathan Fillion. I like that um, Mantis had the one fall in love with Drax. And Drax had to like super awkwardly like dance around. The fact that the dude was in love with him. I thought that was fucking Oh, hilarious. yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> I did like that uh, Peter did get the girl to fall in love with him after fucking Gamora told him that she wouldn't. Yeah, that was a pretty funny bit. That was impressive. He's like, just, just give me a chance. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm not that fucking stupid. Oh. <laughs> No, I'm not. She goes, you can now say whatever you want to them. Yeah, I'm not that stupid. <laughs> I just need to get into control. That's my guy. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, so here's the big main event, I assume. Let's talk about them all together. We got the whole game. We got Rocket. We got Elilo. We got uh, fucking Floors. We got Tease. What do we think about them? What do we think about their inclusion in this movie? I'm gonna let uh, I'm gonna let Ty get it first because Ty is gonna come at it from the emotional angle, I assume, and I'm gonna come at it from like an analytical point. I feel like just because he's more the not saying I'm not an animal guy, but he's like an animal guy. So I know right. that, like a lot of the shit that happened like kind of fucked him up. Yeah. So I'm gonna let him get his stuff out of the way. So yeah, I am coming at it from the emotional side because that the whole shit fucked me up. Um, I'll try to mainly focus on Rocket because that is the main focus point. Um, Rocket going through the shit, like us finally learning the origin story of Rocket and like you now understand why he is the way he is in the first two movies and all the other movies that he was part of. Um, finding out the how evil that motherfucker is and that rocket is like actually super fucking intelligent but it's like you never you never really put two and two that he is super intelligent you just think okay he's just an asshole snarky raccoon and now he is he's actually like really fucking intelligent he just doesn't like to show that side of himself because the one time he showed the side of himself he was ridiculed for it from the guy that was supposed to be like his leader basically like that's the guy he was looking up to well i'm pregnant and now he fucking got his revenge on him fucking well you know when he clawed his face after he murdered his friends which fuck all of that after he murdered his friends he got the revenge he clawed his face up and then got off and went and did his own thing for a while you know joined the guardians and then finally getting revenge at the end where he killed him you know fucking finger quotes killed him I don't know. They fucking just I all that movie. I him saving the raccoons at the end and saving all the animals was a very heartwarming moment. Man, all of it just fucked me up. <laughs> God. Um Yeah, that's that's really it. That's all I could think of. It's just it fucked me up. Hell yeah. Uh, Zay, do you want to get it or you want me to get it? Um, you can get it because most of what I was going to talk about was already touched on. 
earlier in the conversation or just right now. So mm. unless I'll listen to you, if I have something else to piggyback off of you, you know, you're just going to carry me through this thing. You could go. Ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Um, so now I thought, um, like I said, they rocket has had his story. Like they've dropped like little crumbs. So that, that you use that earlier. And I think it's a great fucking analogy. They've dropped a lot of like crumbs for a Ro- like rocket story. Like, throughout the movies um like going all the way back to the first one um and then obviously you know in fucking um <clears throat> in number two you got a lot more like quiet character development and then even in like you know just stuff that the guardians was in like uh like in game and um or like infinity war and in game and then, like, the little bit that they were in Thor. Like, he didn't do, like, a lot in those. But just, like, you know, they like his character arc has always been kind of obvious. Or, like, they slowly reveal certain things, like Tyler was saying, like, that you know, you realize that he is, like, super fucking smart. He just doesn't, like, he doesn't carry himself like he's fucking better than you. Like, he's a snarky piece of shit, but he doesn't do, like, the usual archetype that they do with smart characters of making them have to present how smart they are at all times. He just is a smart guy. Um, and it's like you said, the one time that he like showed how fucking smart he was, someone who was his God, essentially, kind of like fucked on him for it. And um, I like that it was revealed that he is a raccoon. I thought that was I thought that was a dope reveal. <laughs> he is a raccoon after he's been fighting it this whole time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, but no, nah, man, I thought it was dope that we like, you know, we got some, we got the, we got a, a very detailed, a fu- extremely fucking detailed, um, tale of like his origins and, um, seeing what made him, what makes him be who he is now. Um, and God damn the, everything that involved his his first set of friends was so sad and it was so sad that his first his first words were hurts that was his first word yeah. was hurts um that shit was pretty rough to watch um was anyone that like has a pet or just like works with animals or just like is around animals like seeing them when they're in pain is like the worst thing ever um so seeing him like that was pretty sad and like the little blood dripping from his head that Lila had to wipe up. Like, that was a sweet moment, but, like, that was sad. And seeing what that fucking bitch-ass high evolutionary bitch did to fucking teeths and floors is, like... Like, even Lila. Like, Lila's was bad because she's kind of, like, my arm. But, like, you know, like, they were sweet characters, but, like, he fucking made them into, like, these weird fucking, like... Like, I feel like monstrosities is, like a like, a harsh word. I feel like it's almost like if the characters weren't so sweet, it would be a super accurate word. Um, Because like you said, fucking Flores has the fucking Toy Story 1 fucking spider legs gimmick going (laughs) on with the fucking metal mask across her face. And fucking Flores has just like the big fucking wheels and it's just our teeth, excuse me. Um, And like, and I like that. I like that, you know, they're still so, like, dedicated to this dude because he created them. And, like, they don't know that, like, he, like, fucked on them, like, how he did. And they're like, oh, no, nah, we're going to get to the new world and it's all going to be cool and blah, blah, blah. And Rocket's like, no, this dude is going to kill us. We have to get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, nah, he wouldn't do that. And he's like, guys, I am telling you, he is going to kill us. He told me <laughs> he is going to kill us. Um. They fucking got me when they all died. They fucking got me so good. Um, Because I thought, you know, obviously I knew they fucking died because obviously they're not around. Um, But I didn't think we'd actually, like, see them die. I thought it was going to be a case where Rocket had to, like, escape and, like, go, Rocket, get out of here, leave behind, whatever, some shit like that, you know? And then he would just, like, assume that they died or, like, He'd found out that they had died. I didn't think we would actually have to watch them fucking die. So that was pretty rough. Yeah. Um, 
I think the first one, the and it was like a fucking double whammy for me because Lila because when Lila got shot, I was like, no, like that shit hurt. And then um and then I thought that's when I thought it was really gonna be okay, that they were just like, go rocket, go, you gotta get out of here, leave behind with uh fours and teeths. And then when after like the, the scramble, like you see fours and teeths are fucking dead too. And then, like, that fucking scream that he let out was one of the most uncomfortable things that I've ever watched. And then I'm immediately filled with rage watching the High Evolutionary mock him as he legitimately just had... I don't know if that was after Lila or after his other friends, but either way... Someone, I think it was after Some Lila. of the only... After some of the cl- someone that he considers, like, one of his best friends and was, like, one of the closest people he has to him just died literally in his arms is one of the most painful things anybody can go through. The fact that you're mocking him because he's having to deal with that in the moment. I'm glad he got his face fucked up. Um, but nah, nah, yeah. I thought I think Rocket's whole character art was done really well, and I like that he's the new leader. Because I like that, you know, him and Star-Lord, like, over the, the course of the movies, have kind of been arguing about that the entire time, about, like, Rocket's like, well, it's my ship. And so I was like, well, I'm the leader. And he's like, yeah, I have my own shit that I need to go figure out. And honestly, you're a better leader than me anyway. So you're the leader now. Um, I thought that was like very fitting for him that he finally feels like he belongs. And mm. he's going to do what he's got to do to not let any more of his friends die. So, yeah. The only thing that I was reminded of to add on to it is... I think everything they did with Rocket was great. The thing, this is just a personal thing. What would fuck me up even more if they did this is, you know, the whole uh, raccoon payoff they did. Mm -hmm. His entire time, he's like, I'm not a raccoon. I think he's like, oh, I I am a raccoon. And then he adopts the name as a last name. I thought that was cool. Mm -hmm. What would fuck me up in watching it in real time, I thought this is where they were going. I'm like, dude, if they fucking do it, I'm going to fucking burst into tears because like multiple times throughout most of the flashbacks i was like tearing up but i wasn't full blown blown crying or anything i would have gotten fucked up if he was fighting high evolutionary and he's just like you know what i'm i'm better than you i created you you fucking raccoon you were nothing i thought he was gonna turn around just be like i'm not a raccoon i'm a fucking rocket and then just fucking shoot his ass. <laughs> I thought, that would have been, been, been crazy. Been sick as hell. <laughs> but hey, what they actually did that been was a half sick bad. As hell. <laughs> yeah, no I'm other thoughts on Rocket, yeah, bro. bro. You know, you guys said it all. Good stuff. Just like emotional. Just they really, the, the flashbacks and stuff 100% fit in with the movie. And. If that's like half the reason why this movie is so long, then I completely agree. It deserved the time. It used the time well because they fleshed out everything about Rocket. It's fucking mm-hmm. wild. And then at the same fucking time, you know, paralleled, he's fucking in real time on the brink of death. And you're just like, you know, I'm thinking, I'm like, no, there's no way. There's no way they're actually going to kill him. Cause you know it's one, they, it's one of those things where it's like, are they giving him all the character development because he's about to die, exactly. or, <laughs> or are they just fleshing him out? I'm sitting there, I'm like <laughs> trying to think about logically. I'm like, you know, if I were writing this movie, I'm like, okay, you you bench the character early, you get the character development on. I'm like, okay, cool. So then he's gonna come back. He's not he's not gonna die. He's gonna come back, and then he's gonna help out. He's gonna be the one not to die. Maybe Star Lord dies. But then I'm thinking, I'm like, this is fucking James Gunn we're talking about. This is the final fucking movie. And this is the final fucking movie James Gunn is doing before leaving for at least fucking five, ten years. I'm like, they better not fucking do this whole shit, bring him back for ten minutes, and then kill him again. They got my ass. On some self-sacrifice shit. When he flatlined, I'm like, are they really doing this right now? (laughs) I'm like, we're so close to the end of the movie. They could do it. Thank God they didn't. That would have fucking wrecked me. That would have been fucking... such a sour way to like keep the movie going too. It's like, well, Rocket's dead, but we still have a conflict we got to resolve. 
Which also like the scene and the scene when he does actually come back to life, like fucking in the the light and he sees um Lila again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that fucked me up too. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I was just I was about to say the only that's not, I think that's what I touch on. Like, um I I like I really like the scene where, you know, he sees Lila and he gets to talk to her one last time and then he's like, Can I come with you? And first of all, uh god damn his delivery on that was fucking crazy yeah. <laughs> um it nearly in tears when he was like can i come with you and she was like yes but not yet you still have uh you still have a purpose um and then she was i, I forgot exactly how she worded it i think she was like she was like there are those who made us and then there are the hands that guide the hands and then like just like a way like without like saying it is like you have a higher purpose that you need to be around for i thought that was really sick Mm -hmm. yeah in that moment when they were talking and then this doesn't happen a lot to me where because i think i'm smart as shit of course (laughs) so most stuff i watch i'm like okay yeah maybe i saw it come in or like you know maybe i saw it as a possibility so this movie like I just said, it fucking got me. So when she was like, yeah, you could come with us or whatever the ex- exact lines were, but not right now. Literally, I don't usually do this, but I literally just like gave a big ass clap in the theater. I'm like, <laughs> hell yeah. Cause they, it's, I keep repeating myself, but it's just fucking, cause they actually got my ass. I was believing up until that fucking point when she said it, that he was going. And then the groundwork it. was there for yeah. him to just go. <laughs> Ooh, beautiful stuff. My goodness. That's a movie. That's a motherfucking movie right there. Yeah. All right, boys, let's get into some closing thoughts. Do you have any overall closing thoughts before we hit a couple pinpoints? I, I think um, a lot. Yeah, I about to say. Um, <laughs> I about to say. I, I'm I'm kind of ready to get into the points actually because I think we've covered a lot of ground. Yeah. Um, I think anything. I think anything else that we would want to add will be like within these bullets anyway. So I think we should just let's let's get into these points that we got right here. All right. First one. What do we think about this movie in the grand scale of the series of films that is known as a Marvel Cinematic Universe? Uh, I think this is one of the best. And like, fuck, fuck comparing it to like other MCU. Um, like, fuck comparing it to other MCU movies in the sense of like their like their place in the world and the overall arcing story, and like even like only slightly compared like the other guardians movies. This is just one of the best movies, like as a movie that they've ever made. Um, Cause like, you know, a lot of these like MCU movies and like, Oh, it's a superhero movie. So like, you don't really have to be that good of an actor and blah, 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 blah. And like, they just have like this weird, like label on them sometimes. But like, this is just top to bottom. One of the best movies that they have ever made. Just, by and large, as a movie, anything that you give critiques for for any other movie is one of the best movies that they've ever made. Um, yeah, I think that's my la- my only closing thought that I wanted to give before we get into the points or or, or into the points. I'm sorry, excuse me. Um, um, yeah, I think it's fucking one of the best movies they've ever made, even though it is kind of hard to watch for, with all the subject matter. Yeah, I Tyler, I touched. I touched base on it at the beginning. I it is my favorite Guardians movie. I think it is overall one of my favorite movies in a very long time that they've done cuz I enjoyed Black Panther, but I feel like this one just it there was there's been no movie that had me physically connected to the movie emotionally like that and like I'm when I say I'm not going to watch it, that is not a knock on the movie. I physically cannot pull myself to go through it again. That's how fucking emotionally connected I was to the movie. So I just, I genuinely think it's probably my favorite MCU movie that they've done. Well said. Yeah, I feel the same way. You know, like yeah, this is best Guardians movie. Mm-hmm. Um, although 
You know what? I won't. I won't say that. Even even though I just did, I won't say that because part of my reasoning may be on recency bias because I really did like Volume Two. I like that movie a lot. So I'll probably have to see where I feel in the coming week, weeks or months or let whatever. Me, What's up? Let Let me interject right here because I think. I think you are about you are about to make the point that I am going to make. So in terms of just literally being a movie, I think this is the best Guardians movie that they have made. Mm-hmm. In terms of what am I in terms of rewatchability, Guardians 2 is at the top. Mm. Um because I feel like you know, I, the I just Runtime run time has a lot a big effect on watchability of a movie. Um, so I feel like runtime is like one of the biggest things. Um, but also just like the subject matter. And like Guard, Volume 2 is a much more fun movie. Not that that's a knock on Volume 3. Just but just like in terms emotionally of emotionally like, draining. Yeah, in terms of like what am I going to just put on just to have it on? Yeah. And what am I going to put on because I'm in the mood to go out of my way to watch it? Guardians 2 beats Guardians 3 time and time again because Guardians 2 I could just put on. It's a fun movie. I'm like, yeah, there's serious stuff in it for sure, but like it's moments in between stuff. Overall, it's a super fun movie. And still, Guardians 2 is still one of the best movies that they've ever made. Um yeah. it was it was my favorite movie um for a while. It's still in my top 5, I think. I'd have to like go over everything. But Guardians 2 is one of if not my favorite movie that they've ever made. And I again, I'd have to battle and like lay out some shit and see how I compare number two and three overall on my list. But in terms of pure watchability, I think I like number two more. Because I think yeah. it's like it's kind of hard to say like I want to rewatch three because now you know what the subject matter is for three. So it's like, do you want to go through that draining movie and make you put yourself in a sad mood, or do you want to watch two where it was very fun and enjoyable? Right. Yeah. Yeah. With three, it's like I, I'm not. I'm not going to go out of my way to make myself cry again. Yeah, it's a big commitment. Yeah. I um. I have to be very much in my feels to want to watch this movie again. I uh. I was talking to our buddy Morgan about um. Just about the movies in general, and this is the analogy that I made. Um. Because I was like, I don't. I don't watch like a ton of movies like that, so I couldn't think of a movie in compares it to but um in terms of video games guardians 3 is like my uh last of us 2 um right as as a video game last of us 2 is one of the best video games i have ever played but when you bring in when you bring in the story elements and all that other shit i am never fucking playing that game ever again and i legitimately mean (laughs) never playing that game ever again that shit was so fucking sad and there is no fucking happiness whatsoever in that game and like whatever happiness there is it fucking either doesn't last long or Or it gets taken taken away away at some point later on so (laughs) i legitimately am never gonna play the last of us two ever again um but it's like it's a it's a very similar feeling of like Damn, there's a lot of shit that fucks me up in this. Like, I gotta be in the right mindset if I'm gonna be able to watch this movie again for sure. Yeah, I feel it. I'm just gonna repeat you, of course. But yeah, just like, fuck. <laughs> I'm glad you brought up that game. It's the same way I feel about um, Joker. Do you guys watch Joker? Yes. Yeah. I've... I have not seen it. I have not seen it. All right, so just... I know, I know how the movie, like, kind of what happens in it. I just haven't seen it. Yeah, it's just, it's a movie that just... I don't think I'm not against it. If somebody comes over to my house tomorrow, and like let's watch Joker. I'll be like, uh, okay, but I'm, I don't <laughs> think I'm ever going to be in that mood. Just chilling at home. Be like, you know what I want to watch? I want to watch Joker. Cause it just <laughs> beats you down. I'm like, fuck. So guardians, this movie isn't that, I was about to say bad. It's not bad. It's not in that realm of that. Like if I'm doing a Guardians rewatch, 
I'll watch this again, but I'd have to be doing a Guardians rewatch, you know what I mean, of the trilogy, mm -hmm. to get the full experience. It's, mm -hmm. it's kind of like how I feel about, like, you know, Infinity War and Endgame. It's like, I fucking love those movies, but, like, I'm not sitting there, you know, like, every few months or whatever, being like, hey, yo, let me, let me watch these movies, because it, it's fucking, that's, a, that's a whole roller coaster I got to mm -hmm. commit to. But, but like, what's up? I, sorry, I didn't mean to interject. Oh, no uh, problem. But, Shoot yo shit. So with that, though, it's like I can watch Endgame over and over again because I really did enjoy Endgame. Mm. It's like there is that emotional like Infinity War Endgame, that same thing where like it, they had that emotional kick. But it's like now that I've known it, it's like, oh, yeah, OK, I, I know it's coming. I'll be OK. I just I don't think even knowing what's in this movie, I can watch it again. I, I, think I, just, that, I think that comes down to one of those things where it's like a viewer preference thing. Yeah. Because I don't think I don't think Endgame fucked you up as much as this did because of the animals. Um, yeah. yeah. Where, but like I've seen that take from multiple people where like someone was like, "Oh, I can't recommend this movie because of all necessary animal abuse." And it was like, on one hand, I see what you're saying, I understand what you're saying, I respect your opinion, but also on the other hand, I wouldn't say any of it was necessary firstly because it is a fictional movie and these are all fictional animals and all of the abuse was used to drive home a point of how fucked up this guy is and why all these people have gone through all the shit that they've gone through and all that other jazz shit like that um so mm. i was like again i wouldn't say that it was unnecessary but was it fucking a lot yeah it was and can it just be hard for some people to watch stuff like that and some people you know it can be triggering for some people to watch stuff like that if they're not really prepared for it um you know uh thankfully that's not the case for you but you still have that connection to animals so it still fucked you up a little bit yeah um so so i can understand you know i, I for me it's not that bad but i can understand where other people are coming from when they say it is that bad and you know it's a tough watch for them and they probably aren't going to be able to do it again or if they are they're going to need a long long time to be able to mentally re-prepare to go through that stuff again i feel like i have been in an emotional mood since i've seen that movie mm -hmm. like i don't mm -hmm. think i've gotten out of it because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like just how much that actually did fuck me up it just put me in a whole different perspective and i'm like oh my fuck I also you to, to be fair also you had a shitty week and a super shitty past two days but right. that doesn't but that doesn't help though <laughs> right <laughs> all right so oh, hold on hold on my monitor's off hold on let me let me fix this you want me to the the last the last point? Yeah, it's not coming on. I forgot what I wrote. I got to know. I got to know. The last yeah, the last point. Will we see them again? Mm. Ty, I'm going to let you I'm going to let you get on this one first. So, I think for a guarantee we'll see the new quotations Guardians of the Galaxy for sure in future movies. 100 mm -hmm. the, the ending the ending crew that was at the end the child the dog cosmo them i think i don't i don't think it'll be immediate but i think we will see them again now mm. i don't think we will see nebula and drax for a while or quill because i know they said i know they said quill will be back but i don't think i don't think it'll be anytime soon mm. And I think we see Rocket and them again before we see them, like uh, Nebula and all them again. I don't think we see Gamora anymore. Mm. Nah, she's done. Nah, she's yeah, done for sure. I think Gamora, that is the end of Gamora. I I feel the exact opposite, actually. Oh like, shit. Like this, <laughs> we got a civil war here. I, yes, sir. I feel like that new team they set up, I don't think we're ever going to see them ever again. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, I, 
I think they were just, you know, they were just there to establish that Rocket has this new thing. And the only person or people we're going to see from them in the future, possibly, would be Rocket and Groot. I don't think that those new team members we're ever going to see ever again. I do. Well, I think, think we'll see Warlock again for sure. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah, Warlock too. So, like, other than the previ- previously established Guardians, like mm. the the new new ones that we were just introduced to in that scene, I don't think we're ever going to see those guys ever again. Uh, Drax, I I agree with you there. I don't think we're we're going to see him again, like at all. Um, who? Oh yeah. Nebula. I think we'll see her. I think, I think both Nebula and Gamora, if you know what I'm blanking on, you know, the future movies and stuff, but like if they, if this, these other characters go to space or whatever, I could easily see him coming into contact with the ravagers and Gamora and stuff. Or going to you want me to tell you the next help? few movies? I have it. I have it up. Yes. Um. So, uh, I guess announced for November tenth. It is currently in post production. Is the Marvels? So that is directly going into space. Um. Uh. We have Captain America: New World Order. Uh. Which like maybe, but probably not. It's probably going to be more grounded. We have the Thunderbolts, which again maybe, but probably not. We have Blade which I imagine is going to be like a flashback type thing. Maybe not. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that is, uh, that's leaking into 2024. Uh, mm. Captain America would be May. So next year, literally next year of 2024. Thunderbolts would be July. Blade would be September. Uh, currently Deadpool three is slated for like November 8th ish of 2024. Uh, Fantastic Four would be February of 2025. Avengers Kang Dynasty for May 2025. And then Avengers Secret War for May 2026. That's so long away. but um, So long away. Man, just make the movie. Um, just make the movie. <laughs> just make it. <laughs> Please. All right, so probably not in the near future, but I do think like, you know, Nebula, Gamora, they might pop up like around, you know, Secret Wars or Kang Invasion or whatever. I don't think we're going to see those new... Like, I don't think... We might never see like a... Like a uh, like a rebooted Guardians franchise or like a Volume 4. I don't... Or anything close to that. I don't even think we're going to get like a show on Disney Plus or anything. I think the Guardians, like officially, are done. Agree on that. I don't think they get another movie. I think that they do appear in future like other movies, but but they are not the main focus point. Mm-hmm. Let me um let let me let me step in right quick because I have a I have a um I'm sort of in the middle of y'all where or I agree on the sense that we're all they're definitely not there's definitely not going to be an, um unless like fucking twenty 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 nine. They're like, oh, we're finally gonna make Guardians four. <laughs> <laughs> um, but definitely, like within the next like five years, there's not gonna be another Guardian. Um, so the only reason I think we will see this like new team again is I think they're doing a thing. I think they're gonna make a Young Avengers because. All throughout the MCU, they have been laying the groundwork for young avengers because you got kate bishop from hawkeye who she is fucking hawkeye now even though clint is also hawkeye I, they are I miss both that hawkeye. Point. oh okay so that was, did you not watch hawkeye i watch it. i just miss the part where she was fucking hawkeye now so uh she was like he was like she was like i'm gonna need a new name he's like you're gonna need a name or that and he's like i got the perfect one and then it throws like the hawkeye like closing card up and that's like the the say so that she is Hawkeye, <laughs> but he is also Hawkeye because he's not tired yet. Mm. So they're both just Hawkeye now. They're both just rocking the name. <laughs> okay. Um, you've got um, God. I don't. I think it's Isaiah Isaiah Bradley 
grandson. His name also might be Isaiah. Oh Brand. yeah, yeah. Who I may mean, or may not have powers. Yeah. 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 So his his grandson is around, and even if he doesn't, I could see him like uh, like Sam and just taking up the mantle of just wanting to do some shit. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got um, you got Ruby Williams, Ironheart. Mm-hmm. She's in there. You've got T'Challa Jr. Um, so I could see, uh, I had a name for, already fucking forgot. Um, the little girl at the end of the movie, I know her. Um, her name is Miss Marvel and she's not too little. No. <laughs> uh, but the Thor girl, right? Not her, Thor? but not her, but she, There's but so many too. kids running around. But see, that's why, that's my got point so many though. Dads. <laughs> That's my that's my point. All these kids and all these dads. <laughs> um, but like yeah, so love. I guess you can count her too. I got him. Uh, love from Thor four. Um, Fiavel, is that her name? Fiavel. That's what I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call her for now because I can't. Uh, or at least she's based off Fiavel. She's someone who has powers that are like similar to uh, Marvel's powers, and she's she is the daughter of Marvel in the comics, I believe. Mm. Um, that's that's who her character is. Slash is based off of. So the only reason I think all of them, I can see all of them returning, is just because I know that they're gonna need her around if they're gonna do the Young Avengers. They're probably gonna want her around. Um, but also, I just really like the new lineup, and I think it's fun, and I think it'd be cool. Uh, they're definitely not going to get another movie or even like a Disney Plus special, but I could see them showing up in somebody else's shit, um, just like a like a side character, like a one-off type thing. Um, uh, and I also just want to see Groot's new design in action. <laughs> <laughs> want to see that big fucking tank Groot doing some stuff. Um, but definitely, we're going to see fucking Rocket again, and we'll probably see Groot again. Um, and like I already said, we'll see Star-Lord again. I hope we'll see Mantis. I'm not sure. I could see that just not. Then I could see Mantis just not coming back. Um, but I hope we get to see her. Um, I think uh, I'm not sure about Nebula. I um, just because I feel like the way that her character is like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna run. I'm just gonna run uh, nowhere and just be the lead of uh, nowhere. I feel like um, I feel like that could just be her. Her, um, well, that could just be her off right there. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I think Zoe said she's done playing Gamora. I could be wrong about that, but I think she's done playing Gamora too. Um, so that's I why I don't think we see Gamora. Yeah, I think she has said that, but the thing is, she's also said that before, right? Because so. I think the timeline works out where Gamora originally, because she didn't want to be in the movies. Mm-hmm. Or at least, like, not, like, this full-time commitment and stuff. She was originally planned to get killed off in Volume 2. And then James Gunn was like, oh, I'm going to do this Yondu thing at the end. So I'm not just going to tack on a Gamora death onto this movie. So kept her alive. Right. So and then... then and, they kept, and then Kevin Feige was like, hey, yo, girl, I got you. <laughs> yeah, they were like, we're thinking about killing Gamora. And James Gunn is like, hell yeah, do that in Infinity War. <laughs> and then and he's I don't like, know. actually no I still need her though yeah do he's like, well yeah. we already committed to it <laughs> yeah something like that yeah but no so I think we'll in I think uh, I, I'm gonna I'm in a mix of you guys answers I think we'll see some of the Guardians again but definitely not in a as major of a capacity as this they're definitely not getting another movie I highly doubt them getting another Disney Plus special of any kind um but I think this was a good like closing arc for the team, and I think you know the story was told. They they finished the story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some people could do it. <laughs> they finished the story. <laughs> All right, so we said a lot of stuff about this movie. Before yeah, right, we, we go, did. I just want to uh, embarrass myself. Because before we started recording the podcast, for the people who don't know, which is everybody because they weren't here, I mentioned how I find it weird that 
podcasts that are reviewing stuff, reviewing media, sometimes are as long as the piece of media that they are reviewing. I would uh, like to end this <laughs> off by saying that Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 was two hours and 29 minutes. And we are currently, in the time of recording, two hours and 29 minutes. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> Perfect. Hell yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah, the high evolutionary got his ass kicked after being evil. And I'm out you here getting embarrassed much, you know. for talking about podcasts going too long. You or not too long. I think we up. had a great discussion about this movie here today. I, about to, I feel like I feel like there was a lot of a lot of back and forth. I feel like it was good. I feel like this is you know, we got we got some some deep points in there. Um no, nah, I feel like this is a good a good talk. Uh, this is fucking fucking council of the multiverse, baby. You oh, already know. Yeah. yeah, I turned the corner on this. I've I've been convinced that movie wasn't long at all. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah! All right. Well, thank you for listening, ladies and gentlemen. This is our podcast where we come up and talk about whatever we want to talk about whenever we want to talk about it. Uh. We, you know, we convened for the multiverse. We're about we to convene. Just, we convened. Now the convenience. Now the convenience has convenience is, oh my is, God. Be, is being commenced. The convenience is being commenced. Yeah, and, When's the t-shirt coming? Oh hell yeah! <laughs> the convenience. You damn right. Uh. But we must disband now. We're gonna go off into the multiverse and do whatever we're doing. The the council will return. The legendary council, just like Star Lord, will return. Thank you for listening. That has been the Dreadlock Demolition Machine, Bojack. That's me. As well as you already know, we got Prince Pretty himself. We got Tyler L. Guapo. Nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. Thank you. Oh, to... Thank you. To... <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, it's me, your boy. It's the little bitch from the Fantastic Thank Foundation. Thank you. God, put respect <laughs> on my name. No, he's talking about himself, not you. Oh, whatever. You're done. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. <laughs>